uh, Courtney, have uh, points of inspiration. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Whoop. Let's start that up again. Okay. Sweet sauce. All right. So, yeah, and just so you guys know, points of inspiration, you can use them as advantage on uh, any skill check or... Um, what's it? Or attack roll. So. There we go. Everybody in. Oh god, I keep moving things around. I don't mean to. Oh, heaven, move. Now I have to move the screen thing <laughs> on. Sorry. No, Patrick that's okay. I found the dice tray. No, no worries at all. I just gotta slide your portrait over in the stream labs <laughs> <laughs> cool and as soon as I'm done with this we will start with the recap oh it moved me again <laughs> there we go cool you guys can move it for each scene Huh? Yep. Move it for each scene. Oh, I see. Yep. Oh, exactly. I've never seen him actually do this part. <laughs> the behind cool. the scenes. Work. Behind, behind the, scenes. the scenes a little bit. All right. Now, let me pull this up here. Sorry, getting things set up is always a little, a little bit of a time. Do this part. <laughs> oh. All right. Uh, without further ado. Let's go ahead and jump into our recap and uh, get going from there. So, recovering from the battle of last night, our heroes woke in the morning and continued their journey towards Brightzeal Ruin. Narrowly avoiding a hobgoblin patrol in the forest, the scales finally arrived to the cave marked on their map. At the outside, there seemed to already be a contingent of hobgoblins, a researcher of sorts, and a small group of guards. With some deft maneuvers, Clobar turned invisible to peer at the research notes, almost being found out, if not for some distractions from the other members of our group. He made a fast deal with the hobgoblin researcher, Lobon, who had served with Clobar in the past. Lobon would not sound the alarm if they provided knowledge to him of what was inside. Our heroes began to explore the ruin, finding a trapped creature in the upper level, strange arcane lights as they delved further, a steel automaton guarding the second level that they managed to not engage in finding a code of sorts on the first, and a laboratory of sorts on the third level. This complete with cages filled with undead creatures that have been trapped there for millennia. The party debated for some time on discussing what to do with them, Kakira wishing to dispose of them until they found out that some may explode if you get too close. Siga and the rest of the party suggested that they move on, while Flint kept telling terrible jokes to Fang in the back of this level. We begin tonight with the scales having found a way down to the fourth level. The pit having the steps come out while, uh, after they each stepped on three of the different runes. Calvio, however, having his curiosity get the better of him, placed a foot on the red rune, after which there was a loud series of clanging sounds as the cages swung open. The zombies peered out of their cages and saw Clobar in the hallway. So... Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it, and let's have everybody roll for initiative. Would Clobar have time to yell something down the hallway? Yeah, sure. We can have that. Uh, Clobar yells to uh, Fang and Flint, uh, Get behind the door! Uh, I can I can stop them at the door, but you have to get back here quickly. Saying that to Flint and Flint and uh, Fang. Flint, Marsica, and uh, Fang. Everybody there. Okay. Oh, Fang wouldn't be there yet. You guys were in initiative order. You guys are still on the 
way down over there. Yeah. Oh, so we have to. Oh yeah. no. Yeah. No, no, no. Okay. We're in initiative order right now. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um. So let's go ahead and ev have everybody roll. Oof. My new dice don't like me apparently. <laughs> oh no. I neither, right. Patrick. It's fine. So Calvio got 17. Uh, Clobar is a seven. Maybe that'll be the, the, the first of the two ones for the session. Oh no, I'm so sorry. Sega's a ten. Patrick, uh, that's Kakira, is a three. That feels bad. Uh, Marsika's a fifteen. Uh, Flint's a twenty. Fang is twenty-one. Flint is a twenty. Nice. And then, what do we got here with these guys? Um. We gotta add. Okay. And then for these guys. Oh, they rolled terribly. All right, now sort by descending. So Kakira's gonna go first before the uh, the last group of zombies since players win ties. So we start at the top of the round with Fang. What is Fang doing, Marsika? All right, so he's going to try to sprint um, to this back room to get back with the rest of the group. Okay. So, um, are the squares on this one, are they still they're five e feet? They're each five feet, yeah. Okay, and sprinting doubles that? Yep, doubles, Double, my... doubles his speed. Okay, let me look at what he had again. 40 feet? Okay, we should be good, yeah. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and, um, move him right over here. How much, how much movement does he have? He has 40. Okay. So dashing, he gets 80 feet of movement. Yeah. So he dashed right over there. He's good to go. Okay. Um, and that will be his turn. All right. Let me move over here. And then Flint is up. Flint only has 25 feet of movement. Yeah, so he, Flint, <laughs> Flint, hearing the gates uh, open, is going to be like... I, I know when I'm beat. And he's going to run as fast as his fat legs will take him. Okay. <laughs> and he's going to get to about right here. Uh, uh, do you need me to move him? Yeah, he won't. I, it won't let me move him. Oh, that's strange. Okay. Put him right there. Right there? Yep. Okay. Sounds good. And then go ahead, Clobar, go ahead and pick one of those squares that you're on. Okay. Um, since you were right in the middle of them, just for sake of ease. Mm -hmm. um, so that's movement and dash. Is he going to do anything for the bonus action? Uh, nope. Okay, Calvio, you're up. I am going to cast um, Minor Illusion. Okay. And have it look like a wall right here. So it looks like there's nothing down this hallway. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. And then I am going to move back. Let me put here a little a little drawing right there. And here. The wall right there? Yes, exactly. Okay. Cool. Um and then I moved and yeah, I'm good. Alright. Marsica, you're up. Okay, Marsica is also going to dash. She's going to sprint all the way over there if she can see her. 35 feet since you're a wood elf. Dash is 70 feet total. 70. Oh, yep, 70. So 14 right. squares. Okay, well, she can get here. Okay. 
And then um, she'll have her her bow ready in hand and everything, too. Okay. For now. And they'll end her turn. So, it is... Oh, wait, you guys already killed those ones. Okay, never mind. I need to get rid of that then. I forgot you already killed the normal zombies. Uh, we are to Sega. If you're talking, I cannot hear you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just... If anything, I just went... Mm, okay. <laughs> no, it's all good. Um... I don't know where they're gonna be yet. Um... So... Where did it go? I'm... Yeah, okay. So I'm going to... Go... Mm. Yeah, I know. I just... <laughs> I need them to do something first before I know where they're gonna be. <laughs> That's All my good. problem. You know um, go. Yeah. Quill bars on deck. You could ready an action. You could. How do I? What? So, you, readying Sorry. an action is like, let's say uh, I. Like, if Marsica were to ready an action, she said she knocks a bu an arrow and says if the first one she sees, she's going to attack. Right, she's gonna let loose the arrow. Arrow, so um, okay. she's going to attack the first one she sees, and that uses a reaction. So, if you want to cast a spell as a held action, and you basically say, "This is the thing I want to do for my action," and then this is the condition that must be met for me to for me to do it. Okay. Does that make sense? Uh, yes. Okay. That works really well for what I wanted to do. Okay, so then in that case, I'm gonna move. Here. Okay. Yeah, and if the thing doesn't go come to pass, you lose a spell the spell slot. Yeah. Um, it should work out no matter what, I'm hoping. Um <laughs> we'll see, but that's fine. You can't okay, see through then, that illusory wall, by the way. I can't see you like You cannot period. see through the okay. through this illusory wall right here. That Calvio has created. I'm not sure what I can do to help them. <laughs> Get back into the back Everyone, room. yeah. Yeah, I was just gonna, that's what I was gonna use. Okay. Well, I thought I had to see where Okay. Okay. Well, then here. Then I will do that, and because that's what I was gonna do anyways. That's true. Well, even if I stay right here, that's fine. Okay, and then I'll be ready to cast Entangle. Okay. Essentially, is what I'm gonna end up doing for. Um, oh gosh, it's like a ninety foot or twenty foot square. Ninety foot 20 range, foot twenty foot square. Yeah. Yeah. And then I guess whoever gets stuck in it. God, I need to click the right things. And then whoever gets stuck in it, it'll just be in this, like, what, five? Can it be a rectangle, or is it, like, a perfect square? It's it's a it's a 20-foot square. It's hallway. So it would be, uh, it would basically cover the area and then go up on the walls. Sort okay. of deal. Okay, because it would be, like, somewhere, like, around here. Do you want to put it right there? Rectangle. Um, it's up to you. Whatever you yeah. want to do. Okay. So like here. Is that better? Okay. No, 20, I was just twenty foot square. Idea. Where are yeah. you? Where's the center point? Probably right there. Right there. Okay. That's one, two. Sure. One, two. So you watch as vines sprout from that center area and grow into the nearby cells in this space. I don't know if you guys can see that very well. Oh, that's so big. Okay. Yeah. 20 foot square. It's a lot. It's a big area. I was just not thinking as... Yeah, that works. So, that is that is what happens as a result of the spell. 
Uh, you still have... Uh, you went one, two, three, four. You have two more squares of movement to use. Um, I think I'm just going to chill right here. Okay. I'll be okay. Sounds good. Now we are to Clobar. All right. Uh, Clobar, seeing Sika come out of the room, says, Get back to the room. We cannot fight these enemies uh, up close. And he is going to run back here into uh, into the room. Okay. And he is going to ready an action. If everyone comes into the room, into this room, he's going to cast web across the uh, the threshold of the door. Nice. Okay, cool. But once everybody comes into the room. Yeah, once everyone's in the room, he's going to do that. Okay, anything else? Nope. Okay, we are now to the zombies. Um... But all Marsica, Siga, and Flint all see as it this first one tries to move. It has to make a strength saving throw. Let me pull up Entangle here. Uh, has to make a strength saving throw or be restrained. So, what's your DC? Uh, thirteen. Thirteen. So the first one, it's still difficult to rain, so it'll slow it down either way. But the first zombie is going to make it save. Let me see here. 13. It just fails this save. This zombie is restrained. The next one makes it, uh, is going to, uh, you're going to watch as it moves into this space, enters the space. So that was 5, 10. 15. Everyone is, is going to try and move here now. That one is going to be restrained in that spot. And then this one cannot move past him. So they're all stuck right there. Now moving over to... Uh, where are we at here? Now moving over to the other zombies. They're going to move 5, 10... 15, 20, 25, 30. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Okay, he's stuck right there. This one is going, seeing the wall, but hearing people past it, it's going to inspect the wall. What is your spell save DC, Calvio? 14. 14. Um... Oh, man. 14. Okay. Cool. Then, that is their turn. We are to Kakira. Uh, can I fly in the hallway? <laughs> uh, I mean, it's... You can... F f there's, like... Maybe 20 feet of clearance? You can, like... I guess jump and try and use your wings. It'd be hard, but sure. And in sort of like a run and like f just to get some more forward momentum, potentially. Yeah. A little bit more movement speed. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you. It's however much movement speed you have. With and if you want to use your fly movement speed, that's fine too. And then you can dash. Um, and then this stuff is no longer difficult terrain since you guys burned that up last session. Right. So could I like, mm, like run thirty and then dash, but fly? <laughs> I'm gonna say no on that because I I don't know how the physics work or the anatomy works of that. With <laughs> basically, I want to run out of this hallway and then kind of fly down through the door. He's getting a running start. Yeah, sure. Why not? Sure. Okay, we're gonna do that. Fly, uh, fly over, fly over your comrades. Up, Does that give you enough like movement? Here. Yeah, so 30 feet of walking and 50 feet of flying gives me 80. Dear God. Okay. Cool. And you guys, uh, Marsica, Flint, and Siga all watch as Kakira barrels around the corner and flaps her wings and just flies over you guys and landing with a skid right in front of the pit 
and like almost stopping and then seeing the drop below in front of the pit. Uh, you don't have to duck hardcore for that one. <laughs> yes, he gets really tall. <laughs> okay, now we are to Fang at the top. What is Fang doing? Fang is going to... I think he's going to hang out right here. And he's gonna he's ready to bite. He's gonna be ready to bite if one of those uh, zombies comes through. Okay. Holding his action. He's gonna stay, yeah, he's gonna stay with the with the pack. Okay. Now we are then to Flint. What is Flint doing? Oh, Flint is just going to run the rest of the way. Okay. So go ahead. Here's your movement. Oh, I got a movement in there. That's right. Yeah. Okay. That's 25 feet to get him just behind the door. Mm-hmm. And he's going to look around and see if there is, like, a lever or anything on the on this side of the door that would close the door. Uh, there is not. Okay. The lever's on the other side of the door. All right, uh, that's it for him. Okay. Um, Are these now, the same like rolly doors that we've seen? This like, one you pull is. Pull the lever and they roll. Yeah. This Did they one. move fast. I can't remember. This one moved fast. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, let me go back here. Now we are to Calvio. I'm basically holding a firebolt, and if anything comes out of this wall, provided it doesn't blow up on my friends, I will shoot it. Firebolt? With the firebolt. With the teeth. Unless, uh, unless I have a friend near it, and then I'm not going to firebolt it. Okay, sounds good. Uh, Marsica, what are you doing? My help on me. All right. Um, so she is going to come in here. Okay. She's going to come right over here. She's going to run over here. And can she still see somewhat in, like, this direction? Yeah, you can You can okay. see this fairly clearly. You're at a diagonal spot right now. Okay, good. So she's going to um, hold an action. She's going to be ready to shoot if any zombies come through that doorway. Okay. Cool. And that will be it. Held action. Siga, what are you doing? I am running back up here, just behind the door. Um, okay, just behind the door. Oh, everybody's in now. Yeah. So, Clobar's think... thing goes off. Yeah, will I be nice. able to see around Siga? Do, yeah, I was going to say, do I need to move? <laughs> um, Get Siga's out of her way. pretty big. It would add to the AC, but you could still shoot past, I'll say. Here. Yeah, I was going to say, I'll just, like, slide over here into this corner. I've got enough movement to do it. All right. Now, Clobar's web goes off. What is the range and radius of that? Uh, let me double check. That is... Uh, the range is 60 feet, okay. and it is a 20-foot cube. All right. Where's the point of origin? Uh... Like, let's see. 20 foot is the same size as her entangle, right? Yep. Okay, uh, in that case, it's going to originate from, like, over here and go, like, right up to the door. Okay. Yeah, so that would be his watch as a little right a web kind of appears. Boop. Don't mind my terrible drawing skills. And then, so that's all the way down into here. Right? Yep. 5, 10, 5, 10, 15, 20, 5, 10, 15, 20. Oh, it actually goes one more. Okay. So it covers the whole hallway up until that point. And what is, uh, what does it do? Uh... Let's see here. Uh, 
Each creature that starts its turn in the webs or that enters them during its turn must make a dexterity saving throw. On a failed save, the creature is restrained as long as it remains in the web or until it rema- until it breaks free. Okay. And then you can light the webs on fire, right? Yes. Okay. More fire in a confined hallway. Uh, cool. So that's Clobar's held action. What is the rest of Sega's turn? Um, Sega is just gonna, um, chill right here for now. (laughs) Okay, sounds good. Clobar, it is now your turn. Clobar is going to use Mage Hand to, uh, pull the lever on the other side. All right, the lever... Pull the lever, (laughs) Kronk! Um, Mage Hand can pull 20 pounds, right? Up to 20 pounds? Uh, let me double check. How much How much weight can it pull? It can't carry more than 10 pounds. It doesn't specify. Uh... All right. Um, this is kind of on that threshold of there, so let's go ahead and have you make an intelligence roll, like, and add your, um, your proficiency and in intelligence modifiers. Okay. Uh, so that is 16 plus my proficiency, which is 2, so 18. Oh, that's plenty. So you watch as you pull the lever and the door <laughs> closes. So are you guys going to wait and hang out for a minute, or what are you guys doing? Should we try and see if we hear pops and booms? Because if we do hear pops and booms, remember the smoke kind of lingered in this room, and we don't want to walk back into poison. Pops and booms? What would the pops and booms be from? The zombies blowing up. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, You guys wait for about a minute. The zombies have not been able to pass through that entangle spell. How long does web last for? Uh, it lasts... Is mage hand concentration, though, also? Uh, let me double check. No, mage hand is not concentration. Cool. Uh, web is concentration up to one hour. One hour? Holy shit, nice. Yeah, so a minute passes, um, and then a few more minutes pass as listening at the door, you hear pulling and tugging at the web, and you hear them caught in the moment. Oh my gosh, Doggo, yes. Um, but you don't hear any popping at the moment, and... You think after about five to ten minutes pass that they're stuck in there. But the door is closed. And you don't know how to get out. Oh yeah, the lever's on the other side. Wrong lever, crunk! (laughs) The stairs, however, are before you, leading down into the pit. I don't know about you guys, but for some spell slots, I wouldn't mind a little short rest before we went down to those stairs. <laughs> Whatever was down there. I like some spell slots too, but it's a group choice. Clubbar's okay with resting. Yeah, we could do a short rest before we head down. So is that what you guys are doing? Sure. Is anybody keeping it. watch just because I ask <laughs> for short rests and things? What? Is anybody keeping watch or you all? Um, I'll keep watch. Okay. So, Marsica keeping watch. Go ahead and give me a perception check.
That is a 17. 17. After about 45 minutes or so, you hear um, just the general scraping. There's a few bangs at the door and clangs up against it. No popping or exploding sounds. But after a while, it seems to die down and stop. Hey, uh, but the door is holding fine. The door fine. is holding fine. Okay, cool. They're not very Good. smart. They haven't tried the lever. All right. <laughs> as long as they don't pull velociraptors and figure out how to open doors, I'll be okay. Um, be a very, very hard intelligence check for them to do that. <laughs> uh, okay, so I won't I won't say anything, but I am just wa I'm keeping an eye on them. Okay. Um, over the rest, could Clobar spend some time with the potion he found out and try and figure out what it is? Sure. Go ahead and make me an Arcana check. Okay. Man, I am just not with it today. What do we got? Ten. Ten. Yeah, you're you're not sure. You're not sure what kind of potion this is at the moment. <laughs> it you see, uh, from looking at it, there seems to be a lot of power in it. Well, if I get backed into a corner, I suppose I'll drink it. <laughs> <laughs> and see, so I like come up and look over Clobar's shoulder, like very long neck, and see if he can look at it. Um, <laughs> and ask Clobar what you got there. <laughs> in this situation, I think Clobar, Calvio, and Siga probably. Siga would have a very, very small chance, so the DC would be harder for him to know. Mm -hmm. um, but Clobar and Calvio have a chance. So yeah, go ahead and make me a, a Arcana check. Sure. Okay. But uh, both you guys. Ooh, I crit. Ha. My first crit in the tower. Yeah! Got a 19. 19. Um, Siga, you think this potion resembles something that um, your adopted father had talked about a, a long time ago? But you can't remember the name. Um, and it seemed to be almost like a, a mystical sort of substance and it's ringing a bell but you can't think of the name uh calvia what is the total of that 20 uh total would be 26 with the arcana yes cool um that voice your tenant speaks up and says ah you have a potion of possibility in front of you a potion of what? A potion of possibility. It what the... Basically, the person who drinks this potion, they will get a, 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 uh, a silver bead will appear around their head as like a fragment of possibility. It e effectively works as an inspiration point. They can use that to... Um, re-roll something but where the inspiration you have to say i'm going to use inspiration on this and roll both at the same time and take the better right with a po uh, potion of possibility you get a uh, with a fragment of possibility you can after the roll happens but before the outcome is determined by the dm the person can use that po point of possibility and re-roll their dice. But they have to use the new roll. So you guys kind of see Calvio muttering to himself. And he kind of leans over to Clobar and, and says, that's, that's uh, quite the vial you've got there. Um, do you know what it is? Um, he, Calvio says, do you want to tell them? And, and he's like looking at him at, at his own self. Okay. It, totally, Matt, can they switch? 
Or is that for me to decide? That's up to you. Whatever you want. Okay, cool. Um, then you see Calvio kind of giggle, and then he closes his eyes and then opens them back up. Nothing really changes to you guys. Maybe a little bit more stern of a look on Calvio. And it's the same voice, same everything. Um, and he says, that, my friend, can almost shape reality. That is quite the find you found there. Clover looks at him and says, hmm, I will, I will have to hang on to this then. Drink that purposefully. Don't waste that. And then Calvio closes his eyes and then reopens them again. And Calvio just kind of looks around, like trying to re-get his bearings again, just like nodding like, okay, that's how that works, sort of. <laughs> that's it. All right. Uh, Clovar says, well, uh, well, uh, if if we're done here, we should probably uh, head downstairs and see if there's another exit. Indeed. Calvio hand, like, holds his hand out to Marsica and say, do you still have my gem of light? And uh, he'll <laughs> take it back and then he'll take it back and start walking down the stairs. Shining the light down the stairs and treading cautiously. All right. Awesome. Um, would Flint have made rations at this point? Flint would oh, definitely yeah. have passed <laughs> out been, rations. She would have <laughs> handed out rations. All right. So, you all complete a short rest, so feel free to expend any hit dice that you need to to regain hit points. Uh, and let me know when you guys are good and ready to go. I'm good. Everybody's good? Cool. Everybody's got their spell slots back and everything? Yep. Two of them. Uh-huh. One of them. <laughs> so, you descend the long, dark stairs for what seems like an eternity. It's quiet here. Too quiet. The arcane lighting has all but flickered out in this staircase. And as you reach the landing at the bottom, the lights have gone out. You exit the long spiral staircase and a dark room lays before you. Those with dark vision see vague shapes looking like tables with blurred objects on them and a strange structure near the center of the room with something in the center those without uh, oh those that was without dark vision those with dark vision can see a little clearer this is a large laboratory of sorts on the stone tables you see long since rotted implements and at the edge of your vision you see a glass case with very nice goggles in them and arcane inscriptions along the lens journals next to it and other items of interest near the center of the center of the room there's a bit of scaffolding and in between it a gorilla like hulking creature with light green and pinkish skin it's breathing rhythmic i need all of you to make me a stealth check We're going to move you down to the, the next level here. I'm a giant dragon. I suppose I can only do so much. <laughs> Alright. 
right. So 16 for both Flint and... Um, and Clovar. And Clovar. Oh, man. That's cutting it close. I actually have to do math on this one. So we got a 23. And there's six of you. What was the stealth check for Fang? One second, I forgot about Fang. No worries. I believe he gets... Yeah, okay. And if you guys can, go ahead and drag your tokens out onto the map near the stairs. And I'll resize them. Oh, that's not one to do that. I am Burb. One of these days I'll remember to fix it. 18 for Fang. Okay. With an S. Put you there. All right, resizing everything. And then Marsica, go ahead and bring yourself out and Fang out. As a group, you guys just barely met the threshold. And go ahead and place yourselves how you would be standing coming off of the stairs, too. Um, I'll move that over here. Boop. Boop. Okay. So, it hasn't taken notice of you. What are you doing? So okay, when you say, sorry. No, it's okay. Not to be that guy that asks the teacher if, if she's taking up homework, but uh, gem of light. Is that basically a giant light saying, hey, I'm here? Good point. Because I definitely would have been walking down with that. Because I need that to see. Then roll I, your I, stealth I, check with. Realistically, I would have like shown it over him and been like shit and like covered it up. Realistically. Okay, go ahead and roll your stealth check with disadvantage then. Okay. And just roll one more thing. I'm sorry. I'm just being <laughs> realistic. Okay. No, I I, I appreciate the honesty. <laughs> Keeping it Keeping it fresh. You're two for two. <laughs> 20. I mean, it's still a 20. Yeah. It's a dirty 20. Doing the math, you guys were right on the threshold, and rolling any lower brings it below. I'm sorry, guys. Um, as you came off the stairs, um, and as soon as somebody... you got where you were and looked and noticed and instantly froze. Calvio, um, being in the front, shined his light in that direction and immediately stuffed it. And in doing so, made a hushing sound to get everybody to still. As you are frozen for, it seems like two seconds, three seconds, but it feels like eternity as this creature then opens its eyes, looks at you, Fang begins to growl with an unearthly roar 
I need all of you to roll initiative as it barrels in your direction. I just want it to be known that technically it's not my fault. <laughs> technically it's not my fault. Uh-huh. All right. No, I appreciate it. I really appreciate the honesty. And you can I mean, use inspiration. I'm just inspiration. being realistic. Like, it, uh, it's, a, it's a giant light. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Uh, all right, clove bars down there. So for um, everybody rolling initiative, cool, cool. Clove bar, clove bar rolled a 21. Flint rolled an 11. Oh, Flint, Flint rolled an 11. OK. Let me put Clobar out. That's fine. That's probably how that should have gone anyway. So, Kakira, can you just... I'm going to say your name and can you rattle off your uh, your initiative? Kakira. 20. Fang. Uh, 21. Oh, sorry, 12. 12. Dyslexia. Oh, no. Wow. Gotta love Lizdexia. Flint. Uh, 11. Calvio. 23. Marsica. Uh, 23. Okay, Marsica will go first because she has a higher dex, I think. What's your dex? Uh, 20. And then what's uh, Calvio's dex? <laughs> 19. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Just barely. All right, Siga. 7. Oh, no. And Clobar got a 21? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, this thing, we'll call it. The Big horn rhythm of this music makes me want to play this music on my horn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay, this is fitting, though. It crit failed on its initiative roll. Considering its situation. You almost passed the check. Or... Just to be clear, the the wooden thresholds surrounding it aren't like a cage, right? No, it's, it's not like... a cage. It's like scaffolding. Like it's it's terrain you guys can use to get higher. It's about this room is like cavernous. It's like fifty feet tall, and that scaffolding is probably goes up about fifteen feet high. And how tall is this creature? This creature is about 10, 10 to 15 feet in that range tall. Okay. It is bulky. Um, now, let's see here. Marsica, you are first on your feet. Okay. Uh, first, I need to know, did she have her bow in her hand or because they were walking down the stairs, was she probably... Would Marsica guess... have taken her... That's up to you. That's how prepared would Marsica have been. I'm fine with either, as long as you are true to what your character would do. Um... I'm gonna say she was probably more relaxed since it was so dark. I mean, okay. she probably wasn't expecting a big, hulking creature. So be a bonus so action probably... to take it out. Yeah. Um... Alright. So she's going to take out her bow she, for her bonus action and arrow, and then she'll, for this turn, shoot at it. Okay. Make your attack roll. You guys probably already saw how much health it had. I didn't even know that you pulled up how much health it had. I just deleted it because I didn't want you guys seeing. 14. Didn't say anything. Cool. <laughs> 14 to hit. Yeah. Pull up its stat block here. Uh, you watch as the arrow strikes it, it, but it is like a glancing blow off of its hide. Okay. Um, Damn it. Now we are to Calvio. Um, Calvio is going to cast Grease under him. Okay. Where is Calvio going to do it? Uh, basically, I want 
hang on, let me make sure I get this correct. This is a 10 foot cube. So basically, I want him to be standing on the edge of the cube with the rest of it coming towards us. So okay. he's not in the center of it. So where's, uh, it's a 10 foot cube? Yeah, so that's four squares or two squares? It's two squares. It's a two square. So deal. this this square would be the top left corner. Okay, cool. Sounds good. Uh, let me go here and check out our grease. Okay, we'll say that's grease. Terrible drawing. That's okay. It's all good. And then... Uh, can you put the grease spell in the chat so I can reference it? Oh, with... yeah. Uh-huh. Bam. I probably should just go ahead and start clicking cast like that anyway. And then I'm going to start... Uh... Uh, no. I'm not going to do it. Nope, I'm good. Yep, that's it. <laughs> that's all you're doing. That's all I'm doing. All right. Now... We are to Clobar. Uh, Clobar uh, says, I didn't expect to have to cast this again so soon. And he's going to cast Web between the two scaffolds uh, and and snare the creature. Is it a cube or is it a... It is a 20-foot cube. 20-foot cube. Okay. So it basically covers the scaffolding then. Yeah. (laughs) Okay flips and falls into web. And he has to make a, a dexterity saving throw on top of already being in standing in grease. This is going to be several dexterity saving throws here. I'll put that there. Whoop. Terrible web. We'll see how this goes. Whoop. That's beautiful. Whoop. Wonderful job. Hey, thanks. <laughs> Can I still target the thing? Yep. Okay, cool. I can um, move it around. Kovar Is... turns to Calvio and says, Don't cast fire spells. I learned my lesson last time. It's fine. <laughs> Anything else? Nope. That is it for Clobar. Kakira, you're up. Fang is on deck. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cast Spiritual Weapon. Bonus action. Okay. Um, Where are you putting these are it? are ten foot squares. Yeah, they're five foot squares still. Five foot squares. Uh, can I just put it? Like... What's your range? Sixty feet. To have it come out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it'd be pretty hard to, with all the webbing in the area. Um, to get, I'm not sure how that would work with spiritual weapon, but for now, yeah. Where are you putting it again? Can you ping it? Just like right in front of him. Right in front of him. All right. Here we go. Uh, that's your bonus action. Are you going to smack it? Yes. Okay. Make your attack roll. Uh, 22. Oh yeah. That hits. Cool. And roll for damage. Ten damage. Okay. Um. And then. Now, what are you doing for your action? Uh, good question. <laughs> That's a really loaded bonus action. <laughs> uh, how? How can can any? Is anybody else planning on attacking? <laughs> so it's like a silly question. I have to now get up on top of this dude to attack him because, um, yeah. If 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 he gets caught on fire, it's gonna be a bad time. Is the webbing a strength saving throw or a dexterity saving throw? It is a dex saving throw. Dex saving throw. Interesting. Okay. It's a strength save to try and escape it once you're caught. But it's a dex. Yeah, the first save is dex. First save is dex. Okay, cool. Good to know. Uh, Then I'll just do 
a sacred flame. Okay. Dexterity saving throw. What's your your 15. deal? Fifteen. Fifteen. It makes the save. Dang. Yeah. All right. We are now to Fang. Flint is on deck. All right. Fang's not sure what to do. <laughs> um. You know, so for now, I think Fang's just going to kind of come around over to the side here. He's growling. He's very um, ready to attack, but he knows one-on-one's not going to go so well. So he's basically just waiting for the rest of his party to either get close enough for him to join in or... He's also very... I'm not sure how the webbing would work with him either. Yeah. Um, point of order... Does Clobar have dark vision? And so does. Clobar does have dark vision. Clobar does. Does Calvio have dark vision? I have the light. You have the light? Okay, so you'd have one hand with the light, and so since you're. Okay, that's fine. Yes. Um, I would not have my sword out yet. Okay, cool. Just so I'm trying to keep that's why. That's essentially why I decided not to start blazing, because I already. They would be weird. I would have to use a bonus action anyway. Yeah, it's all good. No worries. Um. So that's what Fang's doing. Flint is up. Uh, Flint, for some reason, doesn't have a crossbow. <laughs> so, uh, Flint is going to do something. I don't know what he would do. Uh. Not making it easy on me, Michael. <laughs> Michael is the epitome of building characters for roleplay reasons. <laughs> he doesn't have any damage spells. That was his point. He wanted to only do support and help help people. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, okay, man. Whatever you want to do. Well, Flip is gonna fucking die if he gets gets up close. And Just I'm have not... him uh, feed, feed, uh... <laughs> Give Fang <laughs> rations. <laughs> Give Fang <laughs> rations. Um, uh, Flint is going to, uh... Does he have uh, Vicious Mockery or anything? Sieg is on deck, by the way. No. <laughs> He does not. His cantrips are message, dancing lights, and blade board. Uh, he could put dancing lights up to make it easier for people to see. Oh, that would be so nice. What's dancing lights do again? You have you can have three globules of light go around, or four globules of light that move around and give dim light in a 15-foot radius or put them all together, and I think it's bright light for 30 or 60 feet. All right, so uh, Flint is going to cast Dancing Lights and put lights up uh, around the scaffolding. Cool. So around the scaffolding is four lights, so that area is like here, more well here, lit. here. Oh, I'm not here, paying attention. Here. Okay. At uh, the four corners. You can draw like little yellow globules if you want to signifier okay. as long as that's up and you have concentration on it then i'm fine with just saying you guys can see in this area now um all right yeah, assuming that's flint's turn we move yep. now to siga okay so first off does siga know what this is siga would have no idea Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, then, in that case... <laughs> I've already got so many spells on it. <laughs> you guys um, have all put, like, movement-hindering spells in that area, <laughs> and you're just like, hey, no, you're not moving. <laughs> um, oh, shit. I didn't think about that. Um... Okay, so a 20-foot radius would be the same as the webbing, right? That was also 20 feet? Yes. Ah, fuck. Okay. Uh, 
In that case... Sika... Sika's gonna move... Uh, I don't wanna go too far. We're gonna at least go right... Right there. Kind of okay. on the side, so I'm at least a little bit closer. Hold and... I... Yeah, I'll go ahead and cast Entangle, just because. Right on top of it, too? Oh, my God. Why not? <laughs> if, if you want, you can draw green stuff in that area, so to remind me. <laughs> so, we have three it. movement impairing effects on He's top of this He's not going anywhere. Yeah. So, yeah, Is right. that the end? Is that is the end of your turn? Um... And as a as my bonus action, I think I'm gonna go ahead. Actually, nope, that'll be it for now. I'm just gonna chill for a second. Okay. See what happens. Sounds good. And now Try it is green stuff. the creature's turn. Um, I don't know if I have to tell you this beforehand or not, but uh, Flint's gonna use his last use of bardic inspiration as cutting words to uh, subtract the die from its uh, save for the web. Is that a reaction? Yes. Okay. I'm not sure if I have to tell you that before or not. Yeah. Uh, that would that would help. Um, okay. So, cool. he's, this is first to try and get past the grease. What is your saving throw? Or what is your uh, Calvia? What's your spell save? 14. 14. All right. It makes that save as it walks, and it's now going to try and pass the the webbing. Oh, god damn, four. Minus four to it. Okay, and then... Um, so, what's your spell save, DC, Clovar? Minus My four. spell save, DC, is 14. 14, all right. <laughs> has to roll very high. 14. And whatever it rolls is minus four. Yup. It does not get past the webbing, so it is currently restrained. Um, boom, 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 boom. So, you are going to watch as this thing is just trying to thrash and move and gets caught in the webs and just lets out a scream. Um, I can't suppose it can try and do its action to move again and make another saving throw? Uh, I'm not sure. I know it says a creature restrained by the web can use its action to make a strength check and seer spell save DC, but I don't know if that's in the same turn that it's uh, restrained. Okay. It's going to... Uh, that's what it'll try and do then, because it's an action. Because if it's the movement to get caught, then it still has an action, so we'll save. Okay. So it'll try and break free, um, but you did keep it from moving. And then what is the spell save DC for that? 14. Oh, yeah. He he breaks out. You watch as he just bursts out of the webs. Um, but does he have to contend with that again next turn as he tries to move? Uh, I assume that if the webs are broken, that they are no longer in play. Okay. So then he has broken the webs, but there is still the entanglement on there. Let's see if I can get rid of all this white shit. You guys really don't want this thing to move. <laughs> um, that will be its turn. Marsica, you are up. Okay. So, now, um, I'm going ahead and cast Hunter's Mark. Okay. And then I'm gonna shoot it. Make your attack roll. Oh. 23 to hit. That hits. Especially in its current Wait. condition around. 
That was wrong. Way more than 23 to hit. Four more. Okay, 27 well then, to hit. still hits. <laughs> it's not a plus five. It's a plus nine. How is it a plus nine? What? Uh, so the, um, my dexterity plus oh, my the, the archery. archery thing. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Go ahead and roll for damage and then your, um, hunter's mark damage. Calvio's on deck. Uh, 15 points of piercing damage. Dear God. With, is that including your hunter's mark? Yes. Okay. That is why it was so high. My, the normal roll was mediocre, but then the hunter's mark was a six. The d6 was a six. Okay. Cool beans. Uh, is that the end of your turn? Bonus action, Hunter's Mark, at action to attack. Are you going to move at all? Evan. No, she's good. She's happy there. Sounds good. Calvio, you are up. So what did you decide about sneak attack with familiars? Um, I forgot to <laughs> look that up. Because if, if you... I know what I'm going to do both times, basically, but I can do more damage if I can move Aldra. But if not, it's totally fine. I mean, rules as written, it's yes, so let's go ahead and keep that. Okay. Are these actual stairs right here? They are stairs that go up. Okay. Um, and is it difficult terrain for uh, Aldra to move through this entangle? Um, it just says creatures, right, Courtney, for entangle? Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, it says that it turns the area into difficult terrain. Um, and that the a creature in the area when you cast a spell must succeed on a strength saving stro throw okay. or be restrained. Yeah, since it does say creatures, it, uh, Aldra would would it would, would it be, be on the stairs? stairs? It would have grown like onto the stairs. Okay. Yeah. Well, she only needs to be right here to okay. be within five feet, unless you unless yeah. that's too far up. Um, and that would be all of her movement, even with the. Uh, the double movement penalty because this would be 35 without it and where does she start i assume right in front of me okay so the and block that's... right in front of me 5 10 15 20 25 30 and then two for the next block 35 40 and that's all of her movement okay yeah so i'll so... just gonna move there so she's right um, there so go ahead and move yes. uh you don't have Aldra, do you out so no i, I can't do that out. yeah I need to give you the ability to do that one of these days. One of these days. And, um... And what are you doing? I'm shooting at it with my short bow. Since Take I can see it. Short bow. What happened? Oh, it gave... That's weird. That's funny. I dragged Aldra too near the creature and it gave it as much health as Aldra has. As as much as a cat normally has. That's awkward. No, stop doing that. Why is it doing that? Um uh, sixteen. What? To hit. Sixteen to hit? Yes. Okay, well it's not doing what I want it to do. Um that hits. You watch as it okay, sticks good. in its shoulder. And then I do, where is it? 1d6 plus 4 plus 6. Plus a d6. Okay. So 2d6 plus 4, basically. Okay. Go ahead and roll for damage. This little yellow circle right here is Aldra. Uh, I 10 damage. 10 points of damage. And do I get to do this again? Do I have that yet? 
I don't think I get to attack it again, do I? I don't have that yet. No. Nope. Yeah. Oh. So, yeah, nope. Okay. I'm done. Cool. Now we are to Clobar. Kakira is on deck. Clobar is going to cast Magic Missile and okay. send all three darts at the thingy. So it's right. a five, a two, and a three. So nice. ten points of force damage. Ten points of force damage. What? Oh no! Why did it do that? Oh, that makes me so sad. Why it kept putting the... Um, let me see if I fix this. Why it kept changing the, the health is that when I was dragging it out, it made it cat stats for it in roll 20. So now I have to go get the actual book. I'll be right back. Actually, I can just look it up online. Womp womp. So sad. Okay. And I'll just have to remember the modifications I made to it. Okay, cool. So, that is... Um... You said how much damage did you do to it? Ten? Ten points of force damage. Ten points of force damage. Nice. Okay. All right, we are now to Kakira, unless Clobar has anything else to do. Nope, Clobar is good. All right, Kakira, you're up. Um. All right. Uh, so I'll go ahead and start off by thwacking him with the tombstone. Okay, make your attack roll. Uh, 18. That hits. Alrighty. Uh, six damage. Okay. And, ah, let's, let's go ahead and, let's go for a guiding bolt. Alright, go ahead and make your attack roll. Fifteen. That just hits. Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Go ahead and roll for damage. Grab these ones. They're all different. <laughs> Sorry, I gotta gotta do some math. No worries. Uh, fourteen. Fourteen points of damage, and it is currently wreathed in like black and gray glitter radiance. Is it 14? Yeah, 14. Okay. Okay. Now... I'm just gonna stay where I am. Is there anything else that you want to do on your turn? Nope. Okay. We are to Fang now. What is Fang doing? Um, he's still just, he's just gonna be chilling unless, um, the group moves up. Okay. Uh, then we move on to Flint. Flint is going to, uh, cast, uh, what you call it? Flint is going to eat some rations. He's just going to sit there and eat for a second. Yep. Okay. He's stress eating, and now we are to Sega. Um. 
Okay. So, Sega is going to move a little bit closer. Let's see. 30. Yeah. Okay. So, Sega. Uh, Mm. He gets gonna get it about right there, and okay. is going to. Oh, I guess I set that up wrong. Anyways, Zeke is gonna turn into a giant spider. Okay. <laughs> awesome. How big does that make Sega? Oh. What's the size? Is it large? Yeah, it's definitely large. Okay. So Sega big, is now big bug. a giant sputter. I am very gross. <laughs> <laughs> um. And that's how. Is that how the yeah, crumbles? and then that's my that's my action for now. And you can maintain okay. concentration on this when you go into. What are you guys talking about? <laughs> he was just saying that my wild shape is a bonus action, but I wild shaped, but then. Yeah. yeah so do I still have? If you want to. Do I still have my action like as a spider at this point? Yeah, if you ha if you want to, yeah. All right. Um, I'm not close enough to bite it, but I am close enough to web it. <laughs> Again. <laughs> it's never moving, Aaron. I'm sorry. It's just ah! it's never going to move. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so that I can actually hit it. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like all I, from now on, all the big bands I throw in front of you guys, just constant movement and pairing, and then we'll just <laughs> we'll like, learn today. All I do is a druid, and so when everyone else does it, I'm like, guys, that's like my only option. It's either become a giant monster or it's to get it to not move. No, it's super smart. It's it's really smart and really good tactics. Um, uh, so what so, does the webbing do? Okay, so it's. Uh, it's essentially a ranged weapon attack. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's plus five to hit. It's, uh, 30 feet. Which you I'm don't have sure an action, I'm... though, any... Oh, you do have an action. Yes, yes, you do. Sorry. Okay, I, I was gonna ask yes. if that, like... No, okay. it, it... It's still good. Um... Yeah, and then if hit... It's restrained by the webbing, and then it's a DC 12 strength check, and you all you know that part. Yep. Okay. So do I have to roll anything? Yep. Go ahead and rolling? roll. Has to roll the hit. Okay. 19. <laughs> yep, that hits. <laughs> it is currently webbed, and now it on on its turn, it has to see if it's restrained or not. Or right now. Yeah, as an action. The restrained target can make a DC twelve. Is it uh, just? Is it just restrained as is? Like if you hit, it's restrained. Cool. Yeah, the target's restrained by webbing. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yay, big spiders! <laughs> big spider. All right, you hit this thing with a web. You guys watch as Sega, like animorphs into a giant spider and just shoots web in the in the um, process of it. It is now the creature's turn. It is going to take its action to try and break free. What's the DC? 12? Yes. Okay. Sorry. No, it's <laughs> all good. 12. <laughs> its strength yeah. is plus 5, so it breaks out, and you watch as it bursts out of the webbing. Um, and then it's going to try and move. So now it has to make a dexterity saving throw or be entangled. Uh-huh. Um... What is your... What's the DC f for your druid spells? 13. 13. It is going to succeed on its save. Boo. <laughs> and since it used its action, it can't attack. It's going to move... I don't know. Uh, since you're... 
thing is occupying its space. It's still half movement. So what it's about going. The grease? the grease. Thank you for reminding me. Thank um, you. Thank you. I forgot about what's my your, grease. What's your spell so save DC, Calvio? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's four, yeah, 14. 14? Okay. Thank you. Yep, it makes a save. So, with that, it's going to use its turn to pull itself on the scaffolding and hop over here. And being free, you guys watch as it's like dripping in webbing. Like the string of it is coming off of it. It's hands free and it's just looking right at Sega. Because that's the biggest target right in front of it. That is its turn. We are now to Marsica. Bang might be getting some action here soon. <laughs> <laughs> Um, can Marsica shoot over the giant spider that is now between her and the giant monster? Yes, yes. Easily? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. There's, there's, you can get around. Okay. Um, then I shall roll to shoot. Okay. Um... That is a twen 21. That hits. Go ahead and roll for damage. Mm -hmm. Freaking plus nine to attack rolls. As long as I roll more than like a five, I'm good to go. Yeah, man. if you roll more than like a, a five, you hit most things. If you roll more than a ten, you're almost certain to hit. <laughs> yeah. <You know? laughs> oh, that was sad. Okay, that's... I just gotta start throwing some monks at you guys or something. <laughs> Deflect missiles. <laughs> oh, good. Another six. Okay, so that is um, uh, 12 points of piercing damage. 12 points of piercing. Yes. Um, yeah, uh, math. This thing is looking a little hurt. Ooh, good. And that's, that's her turn. Okay. I spent basically two full rounds just wailing on it. You're going to get a third round of just wailing on it because of all the um, uh, movement impairing effects. Cl Calvio, you're up. Clobar, you're on deck. Um, I'm trying to decide if I try and keep it from moving or if I hit it and pray that Sega gets her web back. All right, Michael's. You said it was pretty on. hurt, right? It's it's looking a little bloody. It's not very hurt, but you guys have done some damage to it. You know what? I'm gonna rather be safe than sorry. I'm gonna cast grease again. <laughs> and <laughs> where are you same, doing? Where are you putting it? Different day. Uh, this square right here is the top left box. Can you, the, uh, can you go ahead and draw it on there? Since I know you, guys, do you guys can do that. Draw shape. Ooh, ooh, bam. Nice. Right there. Can I change the color of it? Is that possible? Yeah, you can. I, I That's fine, though. I can see it. It's no okay, cool. As long as you can see it, then great. Yeah. Oh, hey, Michael's in. Hello. Yeah. Woohoo. Hello. Sweet sauce. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Whoa. I should go ahead and mark which skill spell shots I used for him. Yeah. Uh, then, Patrick stays the same. Courtney needs to be where Michael is. Oh, wait. And I'm the Logan needs to be where Michael is. Or er, where. Yeah. Okay. So, I need to move. Um. see if I put this here. Will it fix it? Yes, it just fixed it. Awesome. Sweet sauce. Okay. Who wants to give like a 20-second uh, recap to Michael as to what happened? Heaven's got it. <laughs> Alright. Alright, man. So here's He's what was going told. on. We were in that dungeon area. We escaped the zombies by going into the room. But then we accidentally got ourselves stuck in the room. So we had no choice but to go down the stairs, so we went down the stairs, and in the dark was a giant green hulking monster thing, 
And since then, we've been like, nah, you're not moving, man. And um, just been hitting it with everything while it's been stuck. That's about it. This monster has not done anything for the past, like, 30 minutes, because they yep. have put movement-impairing spells every turn on it, and it has not moved. If you this check is... the Facebook chat, there's some good memes that'll tell you how we got it stuck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Also, I really struggled to play Flint, because he couldn't freaking do anything. <laughs> the attacks. Yep. <laughs> Why do you think I don't really do attacks and stuff? I'll just like buff you guys or just go pass out rations or something. I was gonna say he did pass out some rations though. Yep. <laughs> Make sure of that. Yep. <laughs> awesome. Now, diving back in, uh, it is Calvio has just cast grease. Are you going to move it all or do anything else? I'm gonna put some space and um move like over over here okay cool um clobar it's your turn kakira you're on deck clobar is gonna cast magic missile again all right go ahead and roll for damage so uh three five two nine points of damage Wouldn't that be 10? 3 plus 5 is 8, plus 2 is 10. Oh, I thought it was 2. Okay, yeah, it is 10. Okay. Cool, cool. Is Clobar doing anything else for his turn? Uh, nope. Clobar is just cool where he's at. Okay. Kakira, you're up. Alright. Fangs on deck. Um, okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use my action. Uh, oh, wait. No, sorry. I'm not close enough to do that. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, Did move. somebody use the thing from his uh, guiding bolt? Who was the next person to hit it? Nobody's oh, yeah. actually attacked it, attacked it yet. Oh, good think. point. Well, I guess that means hey, I get, get to your attack own it. guiding bolt. Yeah. Yeah. Unless Marsica went for it, and then she would have gotten the advantage. But I forgot about that, so we'll just say it didn't happen. Yep, nope, so. it didn't happen, because Marsica also forgot about it. Yep. Okay, well, uh, here's what I'm going to... Am I close enough now? 5, 10, 15, 5, 30. Move up a little bit more. <laughs> cool. Uh, now, I'm going to use my action to use Channel Divinity for Path to the Grave. Uh, nice. So the next time somebody hits it, they're, it's vulnerable to all that attacks damage. Dear God. Okay, nice. Um, and then I'll use my bonus action to move my tombstone right in front of him again. Okay, and, and it gets I'm advantage gonna, on the I'm attack. Hit him. Yeah. Does that mean that it's vulnerable to it's his tombstone? It's vulnerable to this attack. He's just going to splat it on the ground with the tombstone right yep. here. <laughs> Gotta love when you have really smart players. <laughs> Alright, well, uh, 17. 17 hits. Cool. Uh, and then... So, Oof. whatever you damage you roll, just double it for me, so I don't have to do math. 16. 16 total? Yeah. Okay, and is your path to the grave, is that for only one attack, or is that until your next turn? Uh, path to the grave... It's until somebody hits it. It's until somebody hits it, okay. Yeah. Wait, okay. There we go. Math is hard, folks. Okay. I feel you. Is that... Uh... Oh, we only count to four. <laughs> that is my turn. Yep. Fang is up. What is Fang doing? Marsica. Okay, uh, Fang's deck. going to move. He's going to just come right up right up here. Okay. So growling. He's inching up with the rest of the people that are slowly inching up to the thing. Just growling. 
Growling. Yeah, Kay. growling. If it does happen to try to charge and get out of the oil and whatever other nonsense we throw at it to get it stuck again, um, then he'll bite it. If it comes into range. Okay, so if it comes into range, it's going to attack him. Held yeah. action. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Flint, it is your turn. I will give Clobar one bardic, bardic inspiration, inspiration. I think. How many bardic inspirations do you have total? One left. I have uh, four total. I used two before short rest, I believe. He used one, so that means one left. Okay. So I will use the one on Clobar. So he gets a d6 to either an attack roll or an ability check. Correct. All right. Is Flint moving? And yes. Um, 5, 10, 15, 20. I will move... Um, sorry, I totally forgot uh, his name. Um, Calvio? Yes. I'll move up next to Calvio and Kikira. Okay. Can you move your character? No. Okay. Can you go ahead and drag your person out again? And then I'll put them. I'll resize them. Okay, now can you move them? Yes. Okay, cool. Now let me resize it. Boop. And you're okay, right here. Then. I wanted to move up over kind of here. There we okay, go. that works. So stay on the square. Um, cool. Awesome and sauce. And then for my bonus action, I'll draw my sword. Okay, sword is drawn. We are now to Siga. Okay. What? Yeah. Okay, so Siga is going to try to recharge my web, and I don't get it, so we don't have that yet. Okay. Um, and then Siga is going to move, like, kind of up behind it like right okay. here all right um as spooter and i'm gonna go for a bite all right make your attack roll Do you count with, uh, technically yeah okay, so yeah she'd get advantage yeah so does that mean i roll twice okay take the higher roll oh shit this thing isn't that smart, but as soon as you guys start coming across smarter enemies, maybe it'll start attacking <laughs> Aldra. <laughs> okay, so 16 to hit. That hits. Go ahead and roll for damage. Perfect. Um, gotta figure out all my freaking dice. Okay. So... Just to let you know that the target um, as spider has to make a DC 11 constitution saving throw. Or be poisoned? Yes. Okay, how much damage is it first? Um, okay, I was just trying to figure out my dice. Which is which. I still haven't learned all of them yet. All good. Okay. Okay. It makes the save, by the way. That one's an eight. Okay. Uh, seven of piercing damage. If it and makes then, the save, then does it still take the poison damage? Yes, but it's okay. half as much. Okay. So, now let me roll two d8s real quick and pick up my other one. Yeah, I know. Marsica is going to be on deck after the enemy and then goes. And five, or, so. Round down. So yeah. two points okay, of poison so damage? Two, two poison damage. Okay. This Very thing's math. looking hurt pretty good. Um, okay, well, it's this thing's turn. Um, and you watch as it is. So, Calvio, ball, ball. if it moves, <laughs> if it moves, does it take the save or is it at the start of its turn? So, it has to at the start of its turn because it's start already in it. Okay. But if it does move into it, then yes. Uh, DC 14? 
Yes. Oh man, it fell. <laughs> God. All right. So it still does it still have its movement, or is it just knock prone for the turn? It does. It just says when the grease appears, each creature standing in its area must succeed on a dexterity saving throw or fall prone. A creature that enters the area or ends its turn there must also succeed in the dexterity saving throw or fall prone. So I'd assume it can still try and get up. Okay. It'll try it and moves, get up. Then it's going to have it'll to do it take, again. It'll, take the, it'll try and use half of its movement to get up, but it'll do that. DC, <laughs> DC 14? 14. It just made the save. <laughs> so this time it stands up. You watch in, in anger seething through its teeth. It turns towards Sega. And it's going to make its first attack. This is. How many rounds is this? Is this three or four rounds before it could actually make an attack? <laughs> um, where are we at here? Its first attack, it's going to swing one of its massive claws at Sega. Uh, that's going to miss. It's second one. Um, Sega, what's your armor class? 14, currently. Okay, that one will hit. Damn. And that's going to be... Uh... Ooh. Um... 11 points of slashing damage. And... 1 point of force damage. It's then All going. Right. <laughs> it's then going to come in for a chomp, and bite. Try to bite you. Okay. <laughs> that one will hit, and it's going to deal. Oh man, I'm rolling terribly with these damage dice. Six points of piercing damage, and um, six points of force damage. There we go. Jesus Christ. And as it howls with a with flurry fury and anger. Um, that is its turn. Are you still in your okay. uh, well, spider you. shape? Thank you. My I'm still barely in my spider shape, but I am still in my spider shape. <laughs> okay. Um, then that is its turn. Marsica, you are up. She's just gonna move right on up here, and then she's going to shoot. Okay, make your attack roll. That is a twenty, dirty twenty. <laughs> dirty twenty. That hits. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> One for damage. Nine points of damage, piercing damage. Um, nine oh. points of piercing damage? Yep. Okay. That hits. Uh, oh, yeah, of course it hits. Uh, let me hear. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. Nine points. Sorry, I'm trying to... There we go. All right. This thing is not looking great. You guys watch as... Um, with... That amount of damage, its eyes start to glow a little bit and bulge. And its muscles bulge. Um, is that the end of Marsica's turn? Yes. Okay, we are to Calvio. I'm gonna do the thing and stuff with my bow again. Okay. And this has sneak attack on it as yep. well. And Sega's in range. Um, 12 plus 6, 18 to hit. That hits. Well, for yeah. Damage. So this is 2d6 plus fur. <laughs> no, it should be 3d6 because it's 2d6 with your. No, sneak it's, it's a short, so it's 1d6 with a short bow and then 1d6 for sneak attack. Do you not have 2d6? Oh, you're only level 2 rogue. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, yep, there we go. Uh, 13 points of pokey damage. Of <laughs> piercing damage. 13? 
13. All 5 right. plus 4 is 9, plus 4 is 13. Uh, 1. Okay. Just so you guys know, you did over 100 points of damage to it while it was restrained. <laughs> yeah! Of all of those, 100 points. Um. Now, is that the end of Clobar's turn? That wasn't Clobar's turn. Calvio's or, uh, turn? Calvio, Calvio, sorry. I'm getting my wizards ah. mixed up. Everybody's forgetting about me today. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, since Sega's up there, I'm going to have Aldra start moving back to me. Okay. Uh, ooh, never mind. Nope, nope. Are you, you, you going to nope, do it or not? Nope. Nope. I... <laughs> It, it's technically above it. Does it get it because it's on stairs? It's just within range. Like, if, if you got the bonus with it sitting on the stairs with sneak then attack, it's then it's going to get, it, yeah, okay, gets that's the attack nope, it's gonna It's going to sit his ass right there. Okay. He'll be fine. Um, Then we are now to Clobar. Sorry about that. Magic missile. Magic missile. I cast magic missile. Go ahead and roll for your damage. All right. Uh, that's a 5, a 4, and a 2. 11 points of force damage. 11. It's looking really fucked up. And that's Ooh. it. Club bar. Alright. Awesome. Um, then, let's go on to Kakira. Um, well, let's, let's, let's start off with a, a nice guiding bolt. All right, go ahead and make your attack roll. Oh, shoot. That's 14. That That's misses. Not enough. It does not hit. That's not enough. Watch as the, as the energy bounces off of its hide. That's a bummer. All right, well, we're, we're always going to re resort back to the flak. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. I got a nat 20! Are you shitting me right now? <laughs> I got a nat 20! I saw it! Alright, roll for... How, how does this work? Because I've never had this happen before. Double, double, roll, double. roll double damage. Roll double damage. Mm -hmm. So I roll twice, or I roll once and then double it? Roll twice. Roll okay. double the dice. Uh, and is that at the same time? Different times? Same time? Same time. Just roll... Same time? Same time. Okay. Okay, and then I only do I add my um, modifier both times. You don't add your modifier on unless it says in your spell add your. So the damage is one d eight plus five. Okay, then you just add the five once. Okay, cool. Nineteen. How do you want to do this? <laughs> Can I just bring it down so hard it just slams his head into the ground and just squish? Yep. You bring the tombstone down over this thing, caving in its skull as it falls to the ground dead. <laughs> you bug. <laughs> <laughs> Not you, him. You're fine. So, calm comes over you with the final thwack splat it's quiet can I take out my gem and go check out these goggles with the runes and stuff or the notes whatever was near it sure so for you carefully not yeah. like yeah of course um, walking over here, there's a few things that catch your eye. These goggles, which are in this glass case that seems to have runes around the glass case as well. Obviously magic. Um, and it seems to be affixed to the stone table in front of it and the wall. Also around this, looking around the room, you see... A set of leather armor that doesn't have a speck of dust on it. And a circlet with a clear gem set in the middle of it. Oh, man. In, the, in another far corner, looking around, there's a damaged suit of sorts. 
It seems to have a yellow body to it with a cracked glass helmet. Oh, man. So many interesting things. Okay. Um... Okay, can I? Because I, I'm going for this, I'm just gonna do first thing first. Can I see what kind of runes these are? Like, can I tell? Uh, obviously, it's some kind of like keep something out. At least that's what my David brain is telling me. But... You can make an Arcana check if you'd like. Okay. Um, I'm gonna use my point of inspiration on this roll. I don't want right. to fuck this up. <laughs> Actually, no, no. I'm not using my point of inspiration on this roll because if I figure it out, I don't want to fuck up getting it out. I'm not <laughs> using it. I'm glad I didn't. Uh, 19. This is abjuration magic. The okay. runes all around it. It seems to be a protective runes, runes of sort. Do either Calvio or Loran know how to dispel this? With a 19, probably not. Fuck. Um, what's everybody <laughs> else doing at the at this time? Also, what's Kakira doing? Um, I guess just looking around the room for anything interesting. Make me I investigate. Guess the goggles are the most interesting thing. So you and Calvio are checking out the goggles. Yeah. Can and you said there is leather armor near it? There is leather armor near it as well. There is. There's the leather that has no dust on it. There's a circlet with the gem, and then the armor with a cracked glass helmet. I think that was everything that mm -hmm. I saw. Kind of armor. I'll be like pointing to this stuff as I'm like walking to the um, the goggles. So I wouldn't have said anything. I would just been like pointing, like. Okay. <laughs> uh, is it a specific kind of leather armor? Looking on it, it's just it, it. Um. You can. I mean, there's no dust on it. Um, it's a. <laughs> that that's, makes me I mean, nervous. There's in in this um, situation. It's very strange that there's no dust on it, as this ruin is probably several thousand years old. Clover's gonna go ahead and start ca ritual casting detect magic. Okay. So while you're doing that, what is Marsica doing at this time? Um, do you want to meet yourself so I can talk better? All right. So. <laughs> <laughs> Same. <laughs> um, okay, so she wants to, she kind of wants to look at the leather armor as well. Okay. But, <laughs> um, since Kikiro's over there, she's going to go check out the circlet. She's just going to go stare at it. Where's that? Checking out the circlet as well? Okay. Yeah. You guys would also have seen by now that there is a skeleton underneath where the creature was filled. So, what is uh, Flint doing at this point? I am going to walk up to Fang and give him one of my last pieces. Fang excitedly <laughs> wags his tail as he sees you coming, and he sits like a good old boy. <laughs> awesome. What about Siga? Siga is no longer a spider. Okay. Um, so Siga's back to being normal. Not gross size. But since Siga was right here by the monster, um, Siga's gonna look at the monster and then see the bones underneath and check all that out and see if he sees anything or recognizes anything or... Go ahead and make me an investigation check. Okie dokie. Eighteen. Sitting next to it, uh, much like in a lot of the other rooms in this area, you see... Um, Sorry, I was thinking about something else. One of the other descriptions. Sitting next to this skeleton, um, you see a metal card, much like what they found earlier. Okay. Um, um, then I definitely. Do you, what pick languages that up. do you speak? 
Um, I speak Draconic, Druidic, Elvish, and then the Old Tongue. Old Tongue. Okay, so since you speak Old Tongue, on this you see um, a very similar ID card as to what they found earlier. Name is Albert Silbane. I'll go ahead and type that in the chat. <clears throat> and oh my god. <laughs> um, is the skeleton big? Uh, like, are the bones big? No, it's the size of a normal human. <laughs> Um, on it, it says, has also the following information. Conclave, Buldorin. ID number 902345567. I'll go ahead and put that in the chat as well. Make me a history check as you read the name Buldorin. Siga. Thirteen? Thirteen. The name sounds slightly familiar, but you can't put your name, your finger on it. Sorry, my life. Yep. <laughs> um, so. I know so much information, but I can never remember it yeah, when it's, it's important. It's like all of it's just on the tip of your tongue. <laughs> I know. Um, cool. Now, what is everybody else doing at this point? And are you going to let the, the group know that you have found this? Oh, definitely. I'll probably hold it up and exclaim that I found another another tag. Different name, different conclave number, though. I'm going to wait for, uh, I guess, Clobar's Detect Magic to see and, and just like kind of check out these runes and see if I can figure anything out about how to dispel them. And and probably call over Kakira eventually. Okay. Kakira help Calvio with uh, figuring out a way to um, get past these runes. Uh, yeah, you guys can both make Arcana checks again if you'd like, or give one of you advantage on it. Um, Whoever has the higher Arcana. I have a plus six to Arcana. You should do it. So God. Calvio has Shit. advantage. Okay. Um, not that one. I like that one. Uh, 23. Looking over this, Kakira helping you, pointing out some interesting things about these runes, you find it extremely unlikely to be able to open this unless a certain condition is met. Fuck. Okay. Um... I'll look to Kakira and say to say to her, uh, something has to happen for this to open. We're not opening this with force. And can I look around the room and see if there's anything that just sticks out to me at this point for that? Also, um, with help, maybe? Yeah, go ahead and make me a perception check. Uh, Flint, do you still have your dancing lights up? Clobar, or, uh, Logan cast them a little while uh, before you joined. Would you still no, have dancing lights? Out. Okay, so the room is then dark <laughs> at this point. I have oh, my. I, re, I recast them then. Okay, cool. Then the lights are. <laughs> <up. laughs> Spooky. I really just wanted that Spooky. to happen. I thought that would be funny because I knew you didn't know that the room was dark before you put them up. Nope. <laughs> um. What's do I get advantage or is this same? You thing? can make me and make a perception check. Um, it would probably be individual ones at this point. Okay, that's fine. Um, uh, I want to use my. Fuck I got it. a twenty-four. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Nope. Nope. <laughs> I'm not using it. I'm just gonna roll. Uh, a dirty twenty. Dirty twenty. Uh, Calvio, you don't see much. You see some like scuffs on the walls and things. Uh, Kakira. With a 24, looking around, it seems like on the wall there was something that was written there at some, th at some point, long ago, 
but it has been scratched out for some reason. You don't really get a making on the lettering. It's too far gone, but it looks like that something was here and then something took it down. Um, looking around the room with the lights, um, there is more scratches on the room. You surmise that this thing being trapped here for so long probably went a little crazy and was start trying to attack. And it didn't have a way out since there were no stairs heading up. Um, other than that, not much. But the words that seem to have been long since scratched out are of note. Do they seem mendable, or are they just, like, gone? Probably too far gone. Damn. From what Kikira, Kikira would tell How you. How far that. along are we on Flowbar's detect magic? I'd say at this point, after looking around and everybody getting their things, Clobar's detect magic is done. Detecting magic. You are detecting magic now. Um, these items that I have described, um, the leather armor has an aura of abjuration magic around it. The right. circlet has an aura of evocation magic around it. And... The glass case itself is has abjuration magic, but inside of the glass case, there's almost a burning light of magic. You can't pinpoint the school, but whatever is in that glass case is extremely powerful. Those goggles. Um, Clobar uh, turns to Calvio, assuming he's still close to the case, and says, uh, be very careful around that case. Uh, whatever artifact is within, uh, concealed within, is extremely powerful. Um. Oh. Oh um, shit. Okay. It would appear that the the armor has some sort of warding magic around it. Uh, I. It most likely would would make its wearer uh, a little uh, a little more protected. Uh, the circlet seems to have some sort of evocation magic. I imagine that, uh, and this is just simply an educated guess, but that it, it may make its wielder more powerful. The other yellow suit strangely doesn't have any magic on it with the cracked glass helmet. Uh, it seems odd that the, uh, the cracked suit of armor doesn't have any magic on it. Perhaps we should investigate that first. Okay. So who's investigating? Clobar will investigate it. Okay, go ahead and make me an investigation check. Okay. <laughs> Okie dokie. If anybody has something they want to do while this is happening, feel free to speak up. 24. 24. Awesome. Looking this, uh, there seems to be some sort of, like, um, it's made of, like, a really strange material. The, um, the fabric of it is almost, it feels rubbery and extremely smooth to the touch, but as you rub your thumbs over it, it kind of, like, catches and there's a lot of friction to it. Um, there seems to be some tubing that goes from inside of the suit to into the helmet and um, turning it over there is there something that seems to be like a small tank that has long been emptied on the side of it but this suit would cover the entire body like there's boots that go with it there are gloves that go with it the gloves are gloves and boots are of the same make and material but much thicker does it have pockets? Um, it does not have pockets, but it's big enough that you think that whoever is inside of it can keep clothes on underneath with a 24. Clover's going to try it on. <laughs> All right. Um, how tall is Clobar? Uh, Clobar is 6'3". 
it is a really tight fit, but he can get in there. Um, you can't like you ask one of your party members to come help you zi- help zip you up, um, and it can't close all the way. But you're like you're pressed into like this glass helmet and looking around. It's almost a comical sight to everybody. Can Marissa? I go? Over? Oh no, go ahead. Go for it, heaven. Marsica wants to try on the circlet since she's been standing there staring at it. Okay. You're putting the circlet on. Um, there doesn't seem to be an immediate response. Let me check something here real quick. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be an immediate response. So it's just pretty? A moment. Uh, so far, from what you assume. Cool. She's, she's chilling with it. <laughs> but, uh, uh, Clobar did say that it was magical. Yes, this is true. So, but you have not found out any effects or anything yet. I'll, uh, walk over to the armor and say, hey, Marska, bring that over here. <laughs> and then when she... Oh, um, I don't know if I've got more than one. Hang on. I have two. It's okay. All right. I can do this twice. Um, I'm going to... Where'd it go? Ritual cast. Identify. Use both of my pearls. Uh, So I can't do this again. Sorry, guys. Um... I'm going to do it once on the leather and once on the circlet. Okay, so 20 minutes total. Uh, casting time is one minute. Oh, oh ritual if cast. you're ritual casting. Ritual then. cast. Ritual cast. Yeah, you're right. 20 minutes total. So I'm, well, I'm doing, chilling, that. doing weird hand stuff and things. Okay. You can, I think to... you can put both of them down and identify both oh, of them at it... the same time with ritual. Is that how that works? I've seen it done in it other campaigns says, done that way. Touch. It says range area touch. So if how, you are down with the, that, how long is the duration? That. Um, I don't. So it's casting time is a minute, and the duration is instantaneous. But if it's ritual, I don't know if that changes anything. Let's Let just say it. for now you can do two things at once since you have two hands, so you can touch two things <laughs> with it. Okay. <laughs> does, does that change the somatic part of it? No, it's fine. Because, okay, cool. Then I'm I'm sorry. I'm just trying to be. Legit. No, I'm trying to save you a pearl, um, so you can do yep, this again thank later. You. So it's all good. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I appreciate it. Then yes, I'm doing this one time, and a pearl goes poof, and in ten minutes I'll know what's going on. Okay, and you're putting the circlet in front of you and the leather armor in front uh, of you. Mm, I am going to conveniently position myself to where I can tell what the leather armor is the circlet is and have the wards on this thing oh that might be a bad choice i'm gonna okay as i'm doing this i'm gonna look at clobar and say is it a bad idea for me to identify what's in this thing right now you can't touch Um, the item inside you'd probably you'd only be able to identify the box that holds it is that a bad choice clobar is still wearing the suit, and he's like, I'm going to touch the case with this suit and see what happens. Uh, then before I do this, I'm going to pick everything up and just kind of step away. Okay. You walk up trepidatiously up to this case, wearing this suit. You reach your hand out with probably just your index finger at first touching the case and nothing happens okay with that being said Clover is going to try and open the case the case does not open it is fast shut well uh, can Clobar take a whack at trying to figure out what the heck's going on? Like, what what I'd have to do to get it open? Sure, yeah. I'm gonna tell him everything I know to kind of jumpstart his process. 
my entire life story. Here you go. <laughs> Kakira will mention the writing and stuff on the wall. Clover will look at that too. Okay. So what checks am I rolling? Uh, Arcana check to know what's going on with this thing. Oof. Uh, that's an 11, my friend. Yeah. Okay. Actually, wait, 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 wait. I'm going to use saving face. What? Saving face? <laughs> yes. That's my hobgoblin racial trait. Once per short rest, if you miss with an attack or fail an ability check or saving throw, you can gain a bonus equal to the number of allies you can see within 30 feet. Oh, shit. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Up to a maximum of five. Ultra counts. Okay, so oh, plus damn. five. Okay. Okay, so that's a sixteen. Yep. That's a really cool ability. Nice. I just hadn't had a chance to use it yet. Yeah. So sixteen. Nothing more is really coming to you from what they've told you. A certain condition needs to be met. Maybe it has something to do with those words on the uh, that was on the wall. Okay, next check I'm gonna do is look at the wall. Okay, perception. Can, can I help him? Yeah, you can. Look you have wall. advantage on it since Kakira has looked at it already and seen it. All right. Uh, that's a twenty. Twenty. Looking at the wall, um, most you can really see. Looking through it, uh, Kikira, you rolled a 24, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, Clobar, do you speak Old Tongue? Uh, Clobar does not speak Old Tongue. Okay. You just see, like, one character that seems to be from an alphabet that you do not understand. Would he have pointed that out to me? You are currently casting Identify Ritual Casting. I No, I waited. Oh, I thought you were doing that right now. No, I said no. I, I'm waiting. I, I was going to go over and try and ritual cast it on everything, and I asked Clobar before I did it if it was a bad choice because I'm really bad about okay. you know putting my foot on things that gets <laughs> us in trouble. And then he said he was going to touch it, and I went okay, and so I picked everything up and moved and out of the up. way. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Sounds good. Um, I, it's up to Clobar if Clobar would have pointed it out. No, yeah, or to Sika, because Sika can read it too. That's true. Yeah, to anybody who can read it. Would he have pointed that to us? Clover points it out. What do we see? Um, you see the only, the only two, like you see two characters next to together. The only thing that says is it. not very helpful. Nope. <laughs> not in the slightest. Perhaps the it is the creature. Do you want to <laughs> rub the creature on the box? <laughs> uh, I was thinking maybe it swallowed the key, but... Oh. Are you getting any kind of magic shot. anything from the creature? Uh, not okay. anymore. The, the, the creature is dead. So the, whatever magic was in it is gone. Do I sense any cr magic coming from the, like, the creature's guts? No. <laughs> well, it was worth a shot. Um, make me a... Oh, what was... Go for it, Courtney. Oh, I was just gonna say, like, it, since I'm right here next to it, is it, like, holding anything? Is there anything, like, on it or on its neck? nothing like that there's a lot of grease on its feet and there's a lot of webs <laughs> all on it but other than that no nah. fair enough it's got okay. a little bit of cuts on its leg from the from the vines that was cast on its feet okay <laughs> that thing was supposed to be like this really big epic fight <laughs> you guys like just like you're staying here and <laughs> just mowed it down <laughs> At this point, then, I'll, like, cast, I'll start casting Ritual Identify with the box, the circlet, and the leather chest in okay. the vicinity. So I'm, I am now occupado. Okay. What's everybody else doing at this time, or are we going to wait for Calvio? 
So you said that there were words that were on the wall, but they've been like scratched out. Yes. And then, oh, did I did I finish telling you what was next to the skeleton? No. It was the ID card. Yes. I did. Oh yeah, yeah, you okay. did. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I was like, I have that written down, but okay. Um. So if it's like scratched out on the wall, is it too much for us to like? be able to figure it out or like do a rubbing or anything it's not Anybody really like if you tried to do a rubbing or something it would just be a bunch of scratches nonsensical scratches okay but Sega, what's what's your wisdom it is 17 make me a history check for me okay mine's 20 Yours is 20? Yeah. Kikira, you can do it as well. Okay. Five. Okay. Why don't I ever know shit when I need to know shit? That's inspiration. Oh, yeah! Yep. I do have my inspiration point. I forgot about that. Yeah, you can, I think you, can, I have you can roll two. again. Okay, that would be nice okay. because I'm such a You can only player. have one inspiration point at a time. Okay. What was I that, Kikira? Ten. ten? Yeah. Nothing's really coming to you. Twelve this Twelve. time? Yeah. Nothing. Hold on. Nothing. Hold on. Oh. Uh, yeah, I did. Okay, sorry. No, it's all good. Uh, nothing comes to you with the twelve. In the history. Nothing ever comes to me when it's important. Um, I feel that. You guys can <laughs> talk about that. You're like trying to think about something. Maybe that would give somebody else in the group an opportunity to oh. roll. Yeah, I was gonna say if we're talking about it and chit chatting. <laughs> If you if you want my help, you have to wait. Oh, yeah. I'm just That's sitting fine. on the floor going, Ooh, more wait, Wi-Fi these out. <laughs> wait, Wi-Fi these out. <laughs> Does us talking count as helping? <laughs> Was that a Jackie Chan yeah. Adventures reference? <laughs> yes, nice. it was. I fucking love that show. Yeah, oh, feel yeah. free to talk in character to each other about what's going on. Except for Calvio, because you're ritual casting. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm stumped. Yeah. I can't figure anything out. I've just got it from the wall. I don't know how to scratch it. I don't know how to They are read wall it. words. Um, would Flint know anything about stonework? Would that would that be helpful? Would he be able to do anything? Yeah. I'll kind of get up and hobble over and check out the wall. He would be able to do something. Going up there, go ahead and make me an investigation check for me. Or a history check, rather. Sorry. History. Sorry. What do we got? Not much better. Twelve. Twelve? Um, you would know, since you do have your stone cunning thing, a twelve is enough for you. Um... You would know that some civilizations put important sayings in important places. That's it? Yep. <laughs> That's what you get. Alright, uh, I'll start just looking around the room and I would, I'm going to say that uh, maybe there's other pieces of the message in, in places around the room. Kind of what I get from that. Marsica's gonna start helping looking for random word gibberish that she also doesn't understand. Okay. Uh, Same. Should I do like a perception check? Yeah, you guys, perception or investigation? Yeah. So. Calvio, there... you're doing identify. <laughs> Is there, are there any like books or papers or anything in Calvio. the room? <laughs> Can. Can Kikira walk over to the the box, um, and she's gonna say, uh, "In knowledge there is salvation. Our world is precious. We must not let it fall into ruin again." As Kikira walks over to the box and says this phrase, you watch as this white light appears around the seam of the opening, and it starts in the center of it, moves around to the back, and it kind of pops open. She's going to very carefully 
like open it up um, and grab the thing inside. Before you is um, this ornate set of goggles. Um, there are with two lenses on one side. It seems that this lens can basically extend and rescind. The other side has a little, like, secondary lens that goes in front of it and goes back. Um, and around all of the lenses, there is runes. So how does this work since technically it was in my ritual casting, but now technically it's there and can be touched? Um, how does this work? <laughs> I'd allow it. I'd allow it to that you can put it in with the rest of the stuff you're identifying. Calvio is just going to look at Kakira and continuing the somatics and everything and the verbal just like <clears throat> and then continues trying not to lose his progress. <laughs> she she will not pick it up then. <laughs> She's like oh. No, no, no. He, he's going to Calvio's going to continue like <laughs> make me an intelligence check Kakira. Sixteen? <laughs> uh, You'd know that Calvia wants you to bring it closer to him. Oh, I thought he was, like, at the table. No, I am sitting on the ground, and then, like, the armor's here, the circlet's here, and the thing's in front of me, where before I couldn't touch the thing... So I couldn't identify it other than the box. But now you've opened it, and I can, but I have to be able to touch okay. it. Got it. Yeah, okay, well, yeah, I'll, I'll grab it, and I'll take it over to where he is. All right. <laughs> placing these things... I don't even want to look at the group chat right now. Um, placing these things in front. Um, is there anything else you all want to do while Calvio is finishing his identify spell? Look for an alternative exit. Make me investigation check. I heard him coughing, so I like walked over and as he's oh like, yeah, I my hand a water skin. I just kind of set it there and just like <laughs> put the water skin up. next to Calpio. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you guys definitely just look looking at it. for another way out. <laughs> just look at the water skin, and then I'm still doing everything and just look up and glare for like a half second, and then continue back for more. Okay. Um. You guys make me uh, either Clobar make it with advantage or Sega and Clobar roll individually. Or one of you guys roll with advantage. It doesn't matter who it is. I have a plus six to investigation, so maybe it should be me. <laughs> yeah, I just have a plus two. Go for it, bro. <laughs> uh, that's an 18. 18. Nice. L looking around, um, you don't really find... A way out from here you do find a few pieces of paper though and a bound leather journal of sorts I'm gonna try and read the journal uh, you don't speak old time do you yep oh. Sega's so gonna try to read the journal <laughs> peer over your shoulder okay. yeah long neck over your shoulder and try and read <laughs> A lot of it is research notes. Um, in the back, you get the sense uh, that this Albert Silbane person is becoming more paranoid, and so and he doesn't want to be disturbed. So he doesn't want people um, like he doesn't want people to see what he's working on. But then at some point, he doesn't want whatever he's working on to be able to get out. Um, at the back of it, there is indication of a secret hatch underneath one of the tiles in the rune room that will open the door. Well, I'll definitely, I'll probably be reading most everything out loud that I am going through and reading so that Clobar can also know what's going on in this journal. Um, and with that... Calvio has finished his identify spell. Before you are several very 
powerful uh, magical items. The let me look here. Um, starting with the leather armor. The leather armor is uh, the AC it confers is standard, but this is an armor of resistance and it provides resistance to necrotic damage. And you watch, noticing that the leather armor is slightly darker than other armor that you've seen. The circlet is, uh, see, that has evocation magic extended to it, allows the user to cast Scorching Ray one time per day for free. and it's called a circlet of blasting wow the visor in front of you it's name uh, where names don't come with these name a name comes with this one and it is named Silebane's visor can you spell Silebane uh, yeah let me put it in the chat it's as Yeah, S Y L E B A N E. Um, or no, there's no E. It's S Y L B A N E. <laughs> you just changed that to make her right. Sorry, my bad. Um, let me look here. Oh. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. Currently. This visor, if you want to, um, boop, 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 there you go here. This, my cat is trying to decide if he wants to jump on my lap <laughs> or not. Sorry. Um, where are we at here? These mithril framed goggles with clear lenses were once used by the scientist Silbane, Albert Silbane, in order to spot um, invisible phenomena in scout areas from afar. They currently have this ability. I'll put that in the chat for you. While wearing the goggles in, in this state, um, you can normally you can see normally in darkness, both magical and non-magical, and to a distance of 60 feet. Additionally, you have advantage on intelligence, investigation, and wisdom perception checks that rely on sight. Your um, identify ability gives you the impression that there is more power within these goggles that can be unlocked with time. But they, it, the identify spell has not revealed its, nature, its full nature to you. Okay. Clover says, um, if it's all the same, I would like the circlet. You don't know what the circlet does yet. <laughs> you haven't said anything. <laughs> but he knows he knows that it has invocation magic to it. Mm -hmm. mm. Calvio um, fighting off Loran, like, poking in the back of his brain, saying that he wants it. Um, uh, like, you see Calvio, like, almost distracted, like, basically like he's having two conversations at once, but you don't know what the second one is. Um, <laughs> he's like he's gonna say, to yeah. Um, it'll be like, uh, sure, no, shut up! It, it's Scorching Grey. Or, no, it's, no, I wouldn't know what Scorching Grey is. Um, it shoots fire once a day for free and we'll hand it to you. Um, Clover kind of cuts his eyes at Calvio and says I'm also a student of the arcane. There's no need to talk down to me. I, I'm sorry. I'm just distracted. I my, it's, uh, Never mind. Um, <laughs> and um then he will um 
look to uh I don't know. Shit. Does does Kakira wear leather armor? I know uh, Marska does. Kakira has studded leather armor. Oh, so uh does Marsa is she just wearing rego armor? Leather? Um, Calvio is going to say that um, you would be interested in this leather armor. It will protect you or give you resistance to Flint and Sega undead. might also wear leather armor. Oh, oh shit! Sega yeah. wears hide. I don't okay. think that's fit to my size anyway. No. <laughs> <clears throat> um, you would um, know that the armor. And the visor both require attunement, but the circlet does not. Um, it basically, I'll just say that it gives you resistance to necrotic stuffs. Undead stuff wouldn't be angry. Either of you would be good for this. I'll let you two fight over it, I guess. Um, if it's all the same to you guys, I, I'd like a little bit more time to check out this visor. Um, who who's fighting over the leather armor again? You and Sega. I don't. How how big is this? Is this like something Sega can even wear? It's like Sega human size. Big? I mean, you you having the knowledge of arcane. If somebody spends an hour with it, it will fit to their size. Oh, well, that's really cool. Hey, you Sega. What? I said it's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> um Sega wouldn't mind it, but also we'll be okay because I can shape shift. So if you really want it, you can go for it. Then Marsica will take the cool armor because she hasn't gotten anything really cool yet. <laughs> <laughs> um what's the rules on attunement? You can attune to three items at once. Yeah, but that's not... Me hoarding all of it's not going to work. The cure doesn't have an attuned item. I know. Okay, so super meta. This would be... And we can change this out. Like, I, this is not in character. If I get these, I can see in non-magical in, in non -magical and magical darkness, which means I can cast darkness as a blade singer and beat the shit out of people i mean that could you could, I could say that in them. character well i don't know i don't think meta. calvio knows that um but i also don't want to have two attuned items especially when the one i already have the ac is really helpful for literally anyone um then give the ring to someone else yeah it's up to you guys whatever you want to do <sighs> God. <laughs> oh well, I don't even remember. I don't even remember getting the ring from Excelsior. Okay, I don't know why I'm crying over that. Okay. Um. I'm assuming that Kakira is showing like distinct interest in these these lenses. Well, I mean, um, she did pull them out of the case. That's a fair point. Um. Would Kakira be willing to take the ring instead of the lenses? What does the ring do again? Gives you plus one AC. Yes. <laughs> oh my god, shut up! <laughs> uh, I know. <sighs> Man. But I, I already don't have dark vision. Kakira has dark vision, right? Well, that's oh. your fault for playing a human. I don't. At least I don't. <laughs> you I fucking don't normie. Think does. Um, <laughs> only three of you have dark vision. Let me double check. No, I can fly, but I don't you have can dark fly, vision. You can fly. You can fly. No, it makes way more sense for you to have it because you can fly. Oh, it makes, yeah. The goggles yeah. or the ring? The goggles. It makes way more sense for you to have the goggles than me. I don't, I mean, to be, I don't fly that often. Well, you fucking <laughs> should. 
<laughs> I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'd be happy either way. Maybe, maybe, you should, maybe you should chat. ask your your head tenant. <laughs> See what he thinks. Oh my god! Well, my head tenant wanted the stupid circlet because my head tenant's a pyromaniac. But you don't know that. Um. Yeah, uh, Calvio will kind of explain how you can see in magical and non-magical darkness, but there's there's more to this that I I don't I don't know what it what it does. It also helps you de um, determine things based on what you see um, magically, and um, hand it over to you and and say, keep me in the loop on those. Okay. I can do that. <laughs> All right. So you've distributed your loot. What is everybody doing at this point? A... Excelsior is continuing to he sketches out the room uh he writes kind of a um condensed version of what occurred there he leaves out the goggles and he leaves out uh um yeah he just leaves out the goggles he he writes about the circlet he writes about um the uh the mysterious suit he writes about the armor. Is anyone uh, taking the suit with them? Uh, is... is it something that could be easily be carried? Yeah, you can stuff it up, fold it up, Did... put it in a bag. Okay, so it's like a foldable suit. suit. Yeah, it's foldable. Yeah, it has uh, that suit. <laughs> Clobar's gonna fold it up gingerly and put it in his bag. Okay. Big, and... uh... Oh, go ahead. And he's gonna take take a few minutes just to look at the creature and just kind of write write down some notes about it. Okay. Siga is gonna let everyone know that thankfully there should be another way out upstairs with the runes, so that we don't have to try and figure out how to open the door from the inside. <laughs> and I'll kind of take the journal with me just in case there's anything I missed or just to make sure that I know where this potential hatch door is. Um, Clubar says we should we should proceed cautiously. I'm sure that our uh, those feet uh, undead are still lurking around upstairs. He agrees thinking we should definitely go as quiet as we possibly can up the stairs and try and make not too much noise. <laughs> okay. Um, can Kakira put the visor on just to see if it'll work at all? Or does it need to be attuned to I would have told for... you that you would have had to attune to it. Yeah, it takes an okay, hour. So I can't even see, like, the... In darkness or anything like that without it being attuned? Yeah, you have to attune to it first. The same thing with the leather okay. armor. You have, to, you have to attune to it before it, it works. Cool. So you're all making your way up the stairs. Yep. Heading I'm up. Take a tooth from the beast first. You're taking a tooth from the beast. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Make me a strength check. I'm try and pull it out of its mouth. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try and take a tooth and just kind of just nah, walk away. Just standing there for a bit. Well, I was going to try and give it to Elgash to examine. I'm sure he'd find it interesting. That's fair. Um, all right. So, heading up the stairs takes quite a bit of time. Um, thinking back on your fight with that strange creature, wondering what would have happened if you had not locked it down as you did you come back to the level 
You said you guys were moving stealthily, so go ahead and make me stealth checks. The door is still closed. They are not very smart and did not pass any of their checks to try and open the door. Sorry, gang. Oh, no. That's critical. <laughs> Big oof. So They told us to move stealthily. We yeah. decided not to. <laughs> so, you all trying to move stealthily too preoccupied with the things that you found seem uh, those with metal armor keep clanking up against the side the metal bits of your leather leather armor and other things and you're just not quiet one of you almost trips forward on one of the stairs and uh, Kakira grabbing them and then they look down seeing the drop before them and then they keep walking back up. You get to the top. You were not quiet. You hear shuffling on the other side of the door. Um. Marsica's drawing her bow. Yeah, Clobor <laughs> is going to prepare if, when the door opens, if there's enemies in the way, he's just going to throw all of those scorching rays. Can uh, I look in this room to see if that tile is in this room? The tile that Sega talked about? Yes. Yeah, both Sega and if Sega would have showed the the diagram, then both anybody Sega showed the, showed the diagram to, they would know where it is. Oh, and I'm assuming it's outside of this door. Yeah, it's it's uh, the tile is uh, right over here to the bottom right of the room. Oh, so it's not outside the door. No, yeah, this, no. this is the way to get out like in case somebody... Oh, yeah, let's do that. It. Yeah. So, Calvio is currently making his way over there. Go ahead and move your character. Is everybody going to get situated in their spots? You do hear a lot of shuffling on the other side of the door. As you guys are moving around, there's banging and scratching what is everybody doing before Calvio flips the switch are we Unless sure we want to flip this switch Marsika is going to just like as he's pulling the switch she's going to like aim at the doorway just in case it happens to open that door okay is it, could, could we yeah, sorry, use the secret passageway as like a bottleneck or something so we can spread out so we can all see the entrance it's not a secret passageway it's a secret button that opens the door oh and it just opens the it main opens door. the main door oh yeah I misunderstood. Oh. it's a secret button oh. that opens the main door oh Good clarification yeah, that that man. This is about to be a shit show. Okay. <laughs> um, I wonder why. Man, what are you hating on me for? <laughs> so we should critical be... of my character. Critical of how I play my character. Why don't you mind your own goddamn one-armed business? <laughs> oh my god! Wow, that's ableist. <laughs> What was that, Marsica? Just the one being critical of someone for playing a creative game. Marsica is definitely ready to shoot something. Okay, so Marsica is readying her action. Uh, um, Clobar is readying his action. What is Flint doing? I can't hear you, Mike. You're muted. You're muted in Zoom, I think. Can you type in? It may have switched to another mic. Okay, now I can hear you. It's just super quiet. Put it closer to your mouth. Hello. Yeah. Okay, just type in the chat. It's not working right now. Flint has drawn his sword. Cool. Um, Marska, Kakira, what is Kakira doing? Kakira's going to go ahead and ready a guiding bolt. Okay. And then um, what is 
Sega doing? Sega is muttering under his breath at uh, Calvio about how he got us into this fucking mess. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and just is looking at him saying, you better hope everyone gets out of here alive. Um, and getting ready to oh yeah okay and getting ready um i kind of like situate myself right here getting ready to potentially freeze anything with my breath that comes through the door okay you oh you still have your thing i got it back when we did our rest all right awesome so Calvio, you're the one who is opening the door, correct? Yeah, I guess. Okay. So, let me know when you're ready, and then we'll have everybody roll initiative. God damn it, why do I have to be the one to open this fucking door? <laughs> uh, fine! I'll push the stupid button. Okay, as you uh, push the button these creatures have all lined up against it slams slides open everybody go ahead and roll initiative for me actually first before we roll initiative let's get all those hailed actions out of the way since this happens before um starting with clobar you're mm -hmm. using the scorching ray from the circlet go ahead and roll three attack yep. rolls and tell me which ones you're attacking Okay, uh, two of them are going to go on this guy, and one of them is going to go on this guy. Okay, make your attack roll for me, please. Oh, what a shit roll. Wow, I think all of those three of those will miss. Yeah, sadly. Big all sad. three of those miss. Uh, why is this not working? Okay. Um, Marsica, go ahead and go with your held action. Okay, I rolled a 19 to hit. Okay, which one? Oh, sorry. Um, I'll do the... Um, let's do... Say I do this one. I'm okay. not sure I can see this one right now. Oh, yeah, you can. Oh, go I guess ahead. as it came through the door, it doesn't matter. Go ahead um, and so... make your attack roll. I changed my answer. I'm going to do this one. <laughs> okay. Um, wait, you want me to roll again? Yep. Or damage? Um, what was the roll? It was a 19. 19? Oh, yeah, that hit. Sorry. Yeah, yeah you're good. May I go ahead. Roll for damage. Dang it. <laughs> I got uh, six points of piercing damage. Six points of piercing damage. Alright, you stick it yeah. in the chest. Let me pull something up here. Okay. Cool. Um, that one is six points. Boop, boop, boop. There. Okay, keeping track of that. Uh, now, the fang did. Uh, I think we could hear you say something again. Is it any better? Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a little yeah. better. All right. Siga, you held your action for the frost breath, right? Is it possible for me to change my mind on that one? I realized a second later. Or do I have to still do it? I can. Um, what was. Uh, yeah, this time I'll allow it, but in the future it would stick. Uh, okay. what, were you, what did you want to do? I wanted to do entangle instead. I realized that would probably be a better idea. Okay, sure. Go ahead. Since and no one for... could get past my ice. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you. Yeah. So I did entangle. Okay. Go to... ahead and draw for the area. Yeah, I got you. Uh... Let's see if I can do it this way. Um. And so what is it? That should um... be everybody's held actions. So let's go ahead and while uh, Courtney's doing that, let's have everybody roll initiative. Did that show up? Uh, yes. It Was did. that okay? That works. Uh, I had um. 
uh, what was it? A guiding bolt held. Oh, okay, yeah, go for it. Sorry about that. Uh, does a 24 to, to hit? Oh, that yeah, hit? that hits. Okay, cool. Just, Just checking. <laughs> oh, I should probably pick which one I'm hitting. Yeah, tell me which one you're hitting, please. Uh, probably the one that's just right in front of me. Okay. Uh, I think he's dead? Uh, let's see. This is the same one that, uh, Marsica hit. 14. 14 points of damage. Yep, he's down. With that, you watch as you hit him and he falls. Uh, he is going to use his ability. Let me check something here. How much damage was it? It was 14? Yeah, oh yeah, no, he doesn't make the save. Okay, cool. So he's dead. Nice. Um, cool. Now we are to... Uh, now we're in initiative order. Let me make sure who all... Marsica got a 25. Calvio, what did you get? 13. Kakira got a 9. Okay. And then now... I crit failed my initiative, so but I had the three. <laughs> so I got oh. Alright, descending. Cool. Now it is Marsica's turn. Alrighty, so um let's see. I guess the next one closest to me coming in would probably be this guy here. Aver? Say that again, sorry. Uh, the next closest one to me coming in would be this guy here, It probably. would be this one right there. This one, all right. Yeah, that guy. Um, so then I'm going to go on ahead and cast for mouse balance gonna cast um yeah i'm gonna cast hunter's mark on that guy okay make and your attack roll i'm gonna shoot, shoot him yep. if i cannot roll my dice off the table oh boy um that was a 12 to hit <laughs> uh let me check their stats here that might be enough yeah, that hits. Oh, okay. I rolled a With three. your plus nine, a 12 to hit. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead and roll for damage. Roll in. <laughs> oh, yay. Um, good, good, good. Okay. Uh, was it five? Yeah. 13... 18 points of damage. Dear God, this thing almost dies. It's really close. <laughs> um, it seems to be basically on its last leg. Literally. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> Literally. <laughs> this thing. Uh, is that the she end of your turn, Marsica? Uh, yes, that is the end of my turn. Okay, I think Calvio has higher decks than Flint. So Calvio goes first, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Calvio, you're up. Um, seeing that the entangles down there and not wanting to light all the vines on fire and fuck everything up, I'm going to take out my short bow and start shooting at the one or at her. You'd have to reposition yourself to be able to oh, see it just a yeah, little bit. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, Which is easily done. Yeah. It's like right here gonna yeah, be in the way that's of anyone? Yeah, totally fine. Is anyone, am I gonna be in the way of anyone um, shooting? No. Like, can, can Marsica still shoot? Yeah, there? Marsica can still shoot. Fang would just have to get around you. Oh, that's fine. Um, he probably <laughs> doesn't want to go... He doesn't want to go out there anyway. 
He don't want to go out there anyway, girl. <laughs> Trust me. He has a pack now. He could totally, like, do pack tactics now. <laughs> they yeah. blow up. Oh, I forgot they blow up. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. You shooting? Yeah, I'm shooting. Make your attack roll. That's good. That's good. That's good. 25 to hit. Oh yeah, that hits. Make your attack. Uh, uh, if you have you have a plus one to damage at least with this, so oh okay, cool. It, it had two hit points left, so you do enough damage to knock it down. But okay, it cool. has a special ability. How much damage did you roll though? Actually, I do need to uh -oh. know that. Um, so five plus four nine, and I don't have sneak attack. No, nine damage. Nine damage. Okay. Five plus nine is 14. You watch as your arrow hits it right in the forehead and it seems like it's about to fall down dead. But it re ricochets back up and it's just looking at you with the arrow in its forehead. Okay. <laughs> um, um. Is that the end of your turn? Yep. Okay. I can't cast a cantrip, right? Mm, unless it has a bonus action. Nope, I'm done. Okay, Flint, you're up. All right, uh, this one. That's me ping it. Uh, the one behind the one that's dead, I'm going to cast Hold Person. Uh, there, you would know right now that these aren't people. Hold Person wouldn't work on this. A humanoid that you can see within range. It is undead. Is it still a humanoid though? Not in the not for game specific purposes. What? Ah, okay. Yeah, there's a humanoid is a uh, you would know like playing hunters in World of Warcraft that humanoids are like a specific type of character and undeads are different from that type. Undead hmm. is the best race and wow. <laughs> um um Sorry about that. What can I do? Sorry, now? was that to me? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that was to, uh, to oh. Flint. <laughs> His stuff not working. He always wants to cast Hold Person, and then it's against things that can't have Hold Person. <laughs> Once you get Hold Monster... That'll work. Um... But that's a fifth I, level I spell, just... I think ready my weapon in case they do come close, but I know I don't want to be out there and I don't have anything ranged at the moment, so... Okay. Are you going to hold your action for if it comes in range? Yes. Okay. It is now their turn. This one is going to run right up in here, and since Calvio is the one that struck it, it's going to make an attack roll. Entangle? Oh, entangle! Oh, thank you for reminding me. Sorry. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna move him back over there. He didn't do didn't do shit. Um. Okay. Why is that saying it's right there? It's not right there. Okay. Um. So it has to roll its thing or be restrained. Oh yeah, that's gonna fail. That one stays. The next one is going to roll. That one also stays. That one's going to roll. Dear God, that one stays too. The last one. Thank God. <laughs> that one succeeds. Um, but, but everything still, else is in the way. Every, I mean, so is it quadruple because they have to move through people and it's harsh terrain? It gets here on top of this other guy. So let's just move that out of the way. And just so it moves that far with the restraint and everything. Um, that is their turn. It is now Kakira's turn. I don't understand why it's saying that this one right here is right there. It's not. I'm I'm now I'm really sad I used my channel divinity. Because <laughs> boy would turn undead be real helpful right now. Yep. Uh, but since I don't have that, um, can I just uh, I'm gonna sacred flame this one that's almost dead okay the one right in front that's almost dead 
Go yes. ahead and... Uh, oh, it has to make a dexterity save. What's your DC? Yes. 15. Oh, that's going to fail. Roll for damage. Yes. It has one yeah. one hit point left, but go ahead and roll for damage. It has an ability. Uh, three. It... Um... You watch as the it is engulfed in radiant fire. As it... Um... Perishes. Oh, good. All right. Now it is Fang's turn. What is Fang doing, Marsica? Well, as it's been once again pointed out to me that these guys explode. <laughs> Um, I think he's just gonna give us moral support by growling and being scary. <laughs> Sounds good. Alright. Clobar. Alright, Clobar is going to throw a firebolt at this fella. Okay. Does Entangle catch fire? Just so you, just for my own knowledge. Go ahead and roll for uh, the attack roll. I... It doesn't say that it does. Okay. Oh yeah, that hits. Roll for damage. Nine okay. points of fire damage. You watch as this one was one of the ones that apparently explodes. As you hit it, it just <laughs> bursts. Does it make the others explode? Um... No, but it does do some damage to them. Okay. Now, um, is that the end of yep. your turn? Siga, yep. you're up. Okay. Um, so, let's see. So, Entangle only lasts for a minute. Has it been a minute yet? No. No? Okay. Every round is six seconds. Oh. And that's every, like, know. full, complete turn. Oh, okay. Good to know. Um. Okay. Um, in that case. I. <laughs> I might as well try since I. <laughs> we'll see. Um, I'm gonna. Uh, try to throw my yeah melee weapon at the second one that's kind of in the back. Um, okay. We'll see if I can do it. <laughs> uh, what is your melee weapon? Uh, yeah, the. I think yeah, it's thrown. What it's what weapon is it? Simple throw. It's a yikawa. <laughs> is that how you say that? Yikwa. I don't know what that is. What are the <laughs> where? <laughs> is that it's the first like handle? a, it's like a short, um, like kind of um like spear, but it's not like a full length spear, but it's just something like. Oh I don't okay. Know, it's like hand oh, handheld yeah. size, yeah, that can be thrown. Sure. Go so ahead and make I'll your attack it, roll. I'll give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so that's a 13. 13, so yeah, one. that hits. <laughs> okay, yay! Their armor class is not very high. Well, that's good, because I have a minus one on that one. And then... Um... Let's see. I'll Marsica's just, I'll just do it on here. There you go. That's... Oh, no damage so it whatsoever. Does one it damage. hits. You can't do no damage. Oh, okay. It's down. just because it takes away. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do shit. <laughs> One damage, you nigga with a spear. You watch as some of its flaying and flaky skin comes off a little bit. Um, is that the end of Sega's turn? Um, yeah, Sega's just kind of holding out on that entangle. All right. Marsica, you're up. Okie dokie. Who can I see? Can I... The only guy you can really see is the bottom left cornered one. Alright. Okay, I can I can really see him or kind of see him? You can kind of see him. 
Okay, okay, so then I'm gonna. Squeeze. You think with your plus nine, you'd still probably hit him. <laughs> <laughs> well then, <laughs> I'm gonna uh, squeeze on through though, just to be on the okay, safe side. Sounds good. <laughs> and um, all right, now I'm gonna roll. Oh, bonus action to move my hunter's mark over to that guy because the okay. other guy died. And we will shoot. All right. Make your attack roll. Uh, 16 to hit. That hits. And then... Do, do, do. Yeah. 11 points of piercing damage. All right. Looking hurt. And be my turn. All right. Calvio, you're up. What are you doing? I am assuming I can't see shit right now through Marsica and being back here. Um, if I move to the square next to Clobar. Can I see this bottom right one? Yes. All right. Well, then I'm going to 5, 10, 15, basically my movement to yoink myself over here. And um, uh, I'm going to firebolt this one, seeing that Flowbar did it and it didn't really Kay. cause a problem. Make your attack roll. Um, uh, seventeen. Yeah, that hits. Okay. Roll for damage. And it's one d ten. Where is my d ten? Hello, where are you? Okay, fine. I'll just get one of these. Uh, six points of damage. Okay. And uh, that's it. Hit that one with some fire damage. All right, Flint, you're up. I will just stay ready because I'm not running into that. So. Are you done? Yep. Okay. The <laughs> uh, the Hus creatures are going to try and pull themselves free of the entanglement. That one's going to fail. They both fail. They stay there. Um, so with this turn, they don't have enough health yet left. I guess, uh, um, no, their ability still matters. All right, it's, uh, it's Kikira's turn. Let's go. Uh, we're gonna Sacred Flame that guy. Okay. A DC 14 or 15? 15. 15? Oh, it fails. Uh, Excellent. roll for damage. That's a seven. Nice. All right. So, um, you watch as what look, this thing is engulfed in radiant flame. Um, huh? Since it's radiant damage, um, being aware of undead and their weaknesses, you watch as the radiant damage engulfs this thing and it falls dead. All right. Anything else for your turn? No. Nope. All right. Fang, is he doing anything? He's growling and looking scary. <laughs> All right. Clobar. Clobar's going to uh, firebolt this guy. Okay. Make me attack roll. Twenty-four. That hits. Roll for damage. Nine points of fire damage. All right. Nine? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, it takes nine points of fire damage. It's looking pretty beat up. Is that at the end of your turn? Yeah. All right. We are to Sega. Okay. 
Um. Yeah. Is it possible for me to use Thorn Whip without it pulling anything closer to me? Or does it have to pull it closer to me? What is the wording on the spell? Does it say may um, or it brings? If it says may, then it is a choice. It says you pull the creature up to 10 feet closer to you. Uh, up to 10 feet closer to you. So the, um, there's the wording there. So I'd say it's a choice. You can choose okay. not to pull it. Okay. Because I, I definitely don't want to. Um, <laughs> then, yeah. I'm going to... Yeah, I'm gonna get here, yeah, just so I can be close enough. Yeah, because I've got 30 feet to go for it. Um, so then I'll use Thorn Whip. Okay. And... Make your attack roll. Mm. Ten. Yeah, that hits. Ten is its cool. armor class. Nice! <laughs> I'm excited! <laughs> and then... Oh, I will do it as a um, um, a second level. Or wait. It's a cantrip, isn't it? Yeah, never mind. I take it back. It was you just, just reading. More, you get more damage since you're high. Uh, oh, no, you don't. You're not level five yet. Never mind. Yeah, that's what I was reading, and I got myself confused. But yes. Okay. Um, nope, that's... Okay. And then four points of piercing damage. All right. Um... Yes, heaven. <laughs> that's why the cover matters. <laughs> that's why I said, that's why you think with your plus nine, you'd still hit it. <laughs> um, how many points of poison or of piercing damage? Sorry. Four. Four. Okay. So you watch as like you whip this thing around its neck, um, wringing it, thinking that it's down four points, and you watch as it falls to the ground. All of them are dead. So. And nobody got hurt. And nobody got Ooh, we hurt. We should have killed him earlier. Yeah. <laughs> so, what's the deal with the gas from the one that blew up? It's still lingering, but you don't think it's enough to harm you if you pass through it. You okay. can barrel roll through it. Do a barrel. I'm going to delete these. Do you want to? So it's up to you guys. What are you guys doing? Um, we are at the three-hour mark, so we can call it here or find another stopping point. I'm good for whatever. I'm good to keep going. up to you guys since you guys are up two hours different than yeah. we are. There's not I much say... not much left from what you want to do in the dungeon. Up to you. Okay. We are good. We've got the thumbs up from Patrick, Mr. Sleepy Pants over here. Okay. I feel I... that though. I have a question. On the level above us, we didn't get into all those rooms, did we? There There's was one, one off to the room right. That said you did not the, the automaton said you do not have access, basically. You do not have access. But we have the new thing. You have a key card. Yeah. Yes. Little, like an ID thing. Well, I wanna go figure out what's in that last room. If you guys are up to it. Let's go upstairs and show them that uh, show the automaton that key card. All right. So, you make your way up one more level. The automaton does not take notice of you since you've already given a certain level of clearance. So, are you going to just attempt to open the room or what are you all doing? You what did he... Oh, we go ahead. Should... Marsica, go for it. Um, we should try to figure out a way to tell the automaton that we have clearance. How did it ask us the first time? David doesn't remember, but Calvio probably would. Um, 
It, you went to open the door, or when you came down, let me look here. It says, it said, Halt, what is your conclave and identification number? Could we just tell it a new conclave and identification number? You can try. Uh, I know, I was just asking the group, the sorry. What was that? Yeah, I mean, be... if somebody wants to go up to the door and open it, it and it comes and says we do not have clearance, we you can say re-identify or something. Yeah, that would, might work. Probably. And like, you could tell it conclave whatever it said, and then the ID number that it said. So who's trying to open the door, and who is... Not me. Because I've already done Siga the identify. Because... It he already has the ID tag. Yeah, I was gonna say I can do it since I have the okay. tag. So Sega's trying to open the door. As you put your hand on the door, the steel automaton quickly moves in your direction and says, you do not have access. Provide identification conclave number, or conclave and number, or refrain from entering. Okay, and then I'll say conclave Bulldoran. And then the ID number is 902345678. Authorization granted. And it turns around and continues its whoop, whoop. So. Now let's go into the room. Opening the room before you is... Let me go to my reveal areas here. Oh, I don't want hide. I want reveal. Thank you very much. Hit the reveal button. Is it working? Yes. Okay. Before you is, again, more rotted implements. Uh, notes. Rotting notes off to the side. A skeleton in the corner. Um, and on the pad of notes is another very thick leather-bound journal. Okay. Uh, Sega wants to go... is curious about the big journal. Okay, so make me an investigation right check. Alright. Um, 14. You remember earlier that much of the records on this level are rotting to some point and some of your companions had cast the mending spell to keep them from uh, disintegrating further before right, you pick I'm gonna, it up. I'm gonna need Kakira's help. I'm gonna <laughs> get her to come help me. I will cast mending on the journal. <laughs> Alright, you cast mending on the journal. Um, <laughs> opening this up, Siga speaks Old Tongue, correct? Yes. Um, this is a, seems to be a more personal journal of Albert Seilbane. The first uh, journal entry that you see from what you can make out, um, it says, I am so close, so close to finding the substance that can protect organic material from the fallout without a suit. <laughs> Nothing lasts more than a few hours yet, though. Another entry. Two men stopped by our compound. One clad in some well-made armor and weapons. The other in well-made robes. I guess it, the suits of old are in short supply and are failing. However, they seem unaffected. Trying to find the brightest minds, it seems. The auger something. A few of my colleagues seemed interested, though... We have far too much work here to do. Would you like to continue reading? Most definitely. Okay. I have started a side project on the lowest level. My creations will need protection when we make our way outside. Later. It is getting safer to go out, but there are still pockets of radiation. Terrible creatures walk across the land. Something out of nightmares. 
And then a tone. The tone seems to change. This next journal entry says, I hear it. The whispers. He guides me. Tells me what to use. We are close. In knowledge there is madness. Would you continue or... There's a little bit more. Definitely. Okay. She gets quite intrigued. The other researchers. They don't trust me. They are jealous of my prowess. No matter. My pet will be completed soon and my other projects will power my disciples. Next entry. It is finished. I have moved the rest of my most valuable research with it so it can guard them. I cannot trust the others not to destroy them. He tells me that they will seek to kill me. No matter, I can deal with them swiftly. Our world is fleeting. He then said, later says, writes, He showed me how to provide a degree of protection to my pets. This new magic will be wanting to find purchase. He tells me I will see it burn again. And that is the last entry. Okay. Well, Sega would have read all that out loud just so that everyone else could have uh, potentially heard that or gotten all that information since the language that's it, that it's in. Um, I will get a handout to you guys um, probably tomorrow or the next day with all of that written out on, uh, on a sheet of paper. that you can Clover would have 20. made a transcription of those notes. Okay. Um, Sika wonders what the fire burning again that he was talking about could have been. Um... Make me an intelligence check. Okie dokie. Seventeen? Hold on. Yeah, seventeen. Some of the phrases, uh, having seen the, fra the short bits of phrases on top of the doors leading in, there also seems to be short bits of phrases here. Like a, like a like, code throughout like the journal. Like a sentence. Looking through after the tone changes, mm -hmm. the 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 fragments that stand out to, out to you are in knowledge. There is madness. Okay. Our world is fleeting. I will see it burn again. Since. Kakira is standing right there. I'm going to ask her if this means anything to her or if she, like if anything sticks out in her brain. Kakira, make me a religion check. Uh-oh. Uh. Gah. Uh, 12. <laughs> oh man, I'll give you advantage on this because this is something you would probably know. So 12. <laughs> 12 again. 12? <laughs> the exact same roll. Okay. The DC was 13, but since it was you that rolled it, I'll say you know, since you are okay. likely to know this. <laughs> How kind. I, I really want you to know this. Um, this is a common saying by uh, cults of old that followed the chained one. Okay, and the the in knowledge there is madness. Yeah, in knowledge there is madness. Our world is fleeting. I will see it burn again. And I will relay that to Ziga. Does this does Ziga know anything about this? Would Ziga know anything about cults of old or anything you like that? You wouldn't know much about cults of old, but you would know that the chained one is um the, basically the equivalent to the devil in this world. It is a powerful creature entity of some kind that is chained in this planet. 
um, Kakira would know that it is likely chained in uh, the mountain that looms over Orealis that people often call the cage. Would I know anything about old cults from my reading of old tomes? Not much from your experience. Would Clobar uh, know anything? Not much. Kakira would probably be the only one that would know about cults like this in this situation. You guys would have heard it. You would know the general knowledge of people get sent to um, the Shackle to guard that mountain. And that and Kakira would know that Orealis started as a sort of watching settlement to watch the cage. But as time went on, it became a bastion of knowledge. Is there anything else in this room? Not much of note. You think that you, you, those of you uh, reading this or listening, you instantly think his pet is that creature you dealt with in the lowest level. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Um, there's something else that tripped my brain and now I forgot. Clobar <laughs> um, says to the group, um, when we when we leave the complex, uh, I will go uh, alone to speak with Lobon. I believe that will be the safest option. Um, uh, if something uh, something happens to me, I'll, I'll send up a signal, and at that point, uh, you can decide how you would like to proceed. Are you sure you want to go alone? He says, um, he's like, uh, my people are a proud people. Uh, uh, my, uh, my race will provide me at least some level of safety, but I cannot promise it for the rest of you. Well, if you want you company, wanna, oh. I was going to say, I could always change into something for you that would be inconspicuous if you want anything, anyone to go along. You could it also most, take my cat with you. It would most likely be safer if I if I went by myself. Do you just want to take Alder with you? Uh, so we can I, at least see? I don't think that that is wise. Okay. So, continuing uh, on, you may... Oh, would you like to say something? Before, yeah, before we head out, could Kikira grab the journal and just, like, take it with her. Of course, unless Sega was still holding on to it. I'm assuming one of you two would have it. You can take it. That's fine. And if we're leaving, could I also head back into the room with the other research notes and just see what I can also take with me? And you, there's, like, a huge stack. You can take all of them with you. Okay, you want. Well, we're going to do that. Yeah, you went through. I'd say you take the time to cast Mending on them since you know... And was there anything of note about the skeleton that was on the other side of the room, or Nothing not really? Nothing particularly, no. Okay. Okay. Cool. You make your way back up. The stone door still slid open. The hook-armed creature before you, still rather freshly dead, having it been maybe four or five hours starting to stink up this level but you find the lever pull it open and the the gear like door slides open quickly and there's a loud <laughs> shall we Let's shall. All right. So, as you exit this area, what are you all doing? Clobar's headed towards the hobgoblin encampment. Should we see if there's anyone like chilling outside of this thing before we leave first? 
because it's not going to matter if you leave by yourself. They're all here waiting for us. You don't yeah. see anybody in the cave where you're at so far. No, I'm talking like outside. Clover like, will go out first. Oh, okay. You guys can closely follow as closely as closely as you want. We'll give them some space. Okay. Uh, Clobar, you see the light then first entering the cave. You come to stand at the entrance. Before you is it? It is gotten a little darker now. Um, you see Lobon still at the table, scouring notes. He's kind of engrossed in what he's doing. The others are seem to be getting ready for bed. And as soon as you get to the cave's entrance, they are alert, alerted to your presence, and you hear a "Halt! Who goes there?" from one of the hobgoblin guards. Uh, How did you get past us into that cave? Is there another entrance? He, uh, Clobar responds, I am Clobar, son of Vorkoth. And Loban puts his hand up and says, Clobar, what brings you here? And how did you get past us? I have learned a great many things. Let's leave it at that. But I have things that may be of interest to you. Are they of interest to the Empire? Clobar nods. What information have you? Uh, Clobar walks over to Loban and pulls out uh, notes of what was found in each room of the uh, of the complex as well as uh, sketches and diagrams of each floor and, and the magic items are on those notes right all of them except for the goggles okay he says hmm he leans in under his breath to you and says was there any mention of Hulk Ribar? would that mean anything to me make me a religion check thirteen um this is an old hobgoblin spirit that seems to bring madness where it goes. Would I draw any correlation between that and the chained one? You don't think um, you don't think there's a large correlation, if any. Um, Clovar uh, shakes his head. Uh, there were some. Uh, there were some references to the chained one. However, uh, there was no such thing. He looks over the, the items and says, Those are of interest to the Empire. Do you have them with you? Or are they in the ruins still? Um, Clobar says, um, I took the circlet. Uh, the others, I believe, are still are still in the ruins. Make me a deception check with the... Because the leather armor is currently on Marsica. Yeah, but he wouldn't know what the leather armor looked like. No, he wouldn't, but you still have to make a deception check. Alright, fair enough. <laughs> that is a 12. Okay. Now he rolls insight. Technically, I mean, they're still yeah. in there. Marcus <laughs> in there. Oh my god. Um, he says, he kind of whistles, and he says, The lot of you, make your way down. Find these artifacts. We will allow our friend here to keep the circlet for his service. Do we hear this? Uh, faintly. Yeah, you're close enough to hear it. Shit, shit. Um, Clobar says, Shit. Uh, Loban, 
would you be willing to deliver a message for me? Depends on the message and who to. Um, Kobar uh, says, um, tell the eyes of white that if they don't know that I'm still around and that uh, I would seek an audience with them if, if uh, they would like to uh, hear a fuller description of what I found in the ruins. Hmm. I will pass it up through the chain. Kobar nods. You are, are free they... to leave. What is that, Marsica? Are they coming down the cave? They're they're they starting to you? walk their way towards the cave. There there's three um, of them that are walking their way in. I um Well there isn't really a way for us to sneakily hide in this cave, is there? You, there mean, might be rocks and things. You guys can all make cave. stealth checks. I mean, I also have minor illusion, so I could like basically make it seem like the rock wall is going a certain way, but if they detect it, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and make self checks, like in you and okay. whatever y'all want to do. Alright. Nice flint. Twenty-three. Oh I like hunch mm. over in the shadows and make myself look like a rock. Okay, nice. Kakira's got a fifteen, Calvio's got a twenty-three. Man, that was Marsh a crit. Oh, everybody rolled so well. Nice. You all, as soon as you hear um, them moving towards Flint of all people, says, get down. And everybody <laughs> finds a place to hide as the three of them walk past and head towards the ruins that you previously explored. We left the door open, right? Yeah, you did. Okay. You did leave the door open. Um, Loban sa said, you are free to leave. And he turns his way um, and back towards his table of uh, research notes. One more thing. There is a sentry on the second level. Oh? We were able to evade it, but... Uh... Uh, I'm certain that your guards should be able to take care of it. <laughs> they are the finest. And he goes back, it shall be of no worry. Very well. Um, and Clobar is gonna walk off. Okay. Heading into the forest, what is everybody else doing? I guess we'll wait until it seems like everyone's gone by and try to sneak our way out. Loban isn't going by into the cave. He's hanging out uh, at the campsite with uh, research papers. So, uh, you so guys as soon wait as guards are minutes. by, we're out. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, so if we, once we get out of the cave, would he see us? You think so, yeah. Unless, like, you guys would roll another stealth check if you're trying to move stealthily out of there. Uh, we could do a distraction thingy. Whatever you guys want to do. Uh, yeah, we can get to... You can maybe make a certain cat go make some noise again. <laughs> yeah, I'll get to the end and have Aldra, like, let's try... Okay, so I'll do this in tears because I'm going to have to make a check, I'm sure. Um, can Aldra try and, like, sneak past him to get behind him um sure uh, self plus four 22 okay so Aldra gets past him just fine um Aldra is going to jump on his head and start like ring and patting and scratching and stuff. Um, jump on his head as soon as this happens. Then, um, he instantly with uh, since you can see this with really f like lightning fast reflexes, 
brings the sword from his side and attempts to swipe Aldra off of his head. Do I have enough time to poof her back? Uh, what's Aldra's AC? It, it happens really fast. 12. 12. He didn't roll well, so we'll see how this is. Uh, he still hits her. How much health does she have? Two. Yeah, Aldra's poofed out. Fuck. Like, he says that, and noticing the poof, he says, um, looking around, assuming you can see, you see his eyes glow, and for a second, looking towards the cave, he looks back towards Lobon, and he says, I'll keep your secret if you keep mine. The lot of you may leave. Okay. We're just gonna go. Bye. <laughs> he puts his she's his sword again. God. <laughs> My poor cat. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. I mean, that's kind of what it's for. Um. <clears throat> so. Bam. Um, you guys make your way out of their camp a little ways. Start making your own. And recollecting everything that happened, we'll go ahead and end right there. You guys have reached level five. (laughs) Wait, do we have to wait until we get a next long rest, or is this... This is your guys' long rest. So, yeah, we'll say at the end of this, you you guys level up. So... Let's go ahead and level up right now. Um, we'll do the level up off stream so that we're not keeping anybody. For all that we're here watching, really appreciate it. And yeah, hope you guys all have happy holidays. And.